Welcome to the Cam and Strick podcast, episode number one thirty three. Yeah. Well, what do you what do you whisper? I said to Glenn me? Healy. Yeah. That's who we're talking about. Well, we got a lot in the bank, and I know we what we're going to do next. Yes, so yes, I didn't we know. Do. We, yeah, did, we just got Healy. done with a couple guys. And did you ever wear Heelys? Uh, those shoes that had like the wheels on them? They, like kids like just start rolling around. I'm going to be that on. for Halloween. <laughs> I'm going to be the guy with tight shorts, no shirt on, goofy fucking skates. hat with the goofy glasses, and like kind of look flamboyant. And I'm going to wear the roller skate things and like do like skate sh- backwards and like go like act like I'm doing tricks like yeah. And like you see that on like Facebook oh, sometimes yeah, where the right. guy goes and like. Touches the pole like. You ever been on real roller skates before? Like not roller blades, but like yeah, roller back skates. in the day, back in the day, it's not they easy to do, suck. man. It's not easy. No ankle support. Dude, on roller those. blades are the best. Yes. We've talked about this yes. before. Yes. If you have kids, you don't need ice. You don't need to spend money on ice all the fucking time, Andy. You know this. You get your kids roller blades with tight we- or hard, uh, hard wheels, mm-hmm. uh, asphalt wheels, and you roller blade around with them. Or if you can't roller blade, you walk fast, or you ride a bike and let him roller blade. Yeah. Rollerblading is the same motion. Your kids, if they don't have rollerblades and they're hockey, playing hockey, yeah. figure it the fuck what out. What do you think of rollerblading for exercise as ex, as Great. cardio activity? Oh, my God. It's hard to go like down hills. wrist weights and stuff like that. Uh, you, know, you don't ankle need that. Weights. Andy, Andy, what are you okay. a fucking, in the 80s? <laughs> and, uh, get out of here. Fuck in sake. The 80s. Fucking pink fucking ankle weights. What are you, what's wrong with you? Hey. No, you go up. What, I might say something wrong there? I don't, I don't give know. a shit. I don't know. Here's the deal. If you settle down, sensitive. (laughs) If you go up hills, it's hardcore. But the bad thing is about rollerblades and rollerblading around your your subdivision Mm -hmm. is going downhill. So you have to see cut. Yeah, yeah. everybody everybody knows that. Oh, do they? Everybody knows that. Andy, I I don't think you you act like you're inventing like how to rollerblade in the neighborhood. We all know this. See, shut the fuck up. (laughs) I'm telling you, if you rollerblade on hill, it's great. You said workout wise. I'm saying Mm -hmm. if you go up hill, like blah blah, it's just you gotta get back downhill. And that's what causes shit. Because you, when you see cut down a hill that's busy, cars are coming. Well, I let's put it this way: I rolled away with Kate the other day. Oh, did you? Oh, Jesus, Andy! Yeah. It was a goddamn disaster. Why? Because my old house. In my shitty subdivision mm-hmm. with shitty fuck no way, streets. Just roller playing around. We're roller playing around, and I'm stick handling. I'm like, this is oh, you're right. stick handling. Yeah, and she's roller playing like next to me. I got her roller blades. Just so yeah. I did it all the time when I was mm-hmm. playing and stuff. So she started roller playing. Terrible hands, by the way. Horrible. Yeah, terrible. And so hands. yours are good though. You're a great <laughs> athlete. So we go up these, and I go down a hill with Kate. Oh God, she blows a tire. No. Oh. oh God, yes. I pick her up. She's like, I can't get down. I'm like, okay. I go. I take my stick. I, I, I she holds on to my hockey stick, oh, yeah. and I'm like, see, cutting all the way oh. down. Like, and I'm You're holding, such a hero. I'm such, such a, hero. a hero. And then Did car, you give her your Letterman. Co- I had too? a motherfucking traffic jam coming, and I'm holding them off like there's a bear in the wood, like in the, in the middle of the street. No, there's a bear. I know. And with hold, you know, and I stopped traffic, and I'm like holding Kate down our yeah. subdivision. It was the goofiest thing in the world. Mm-hmm. We haven't done it yet. Yeah. We haven't done it since because she, she blew a fucking. She needed like a band aid or anything. Oh my! Or her knees are beat up. Up. Where, where are the, where they, her knees, yeah. her hands, and I like, yeah. kind of scraped her face. Oh and then, my like, God. anytime we went places, like, what happened to yeah, Kate? She, like, my, my, see, like, my like, wife. I didn't do anything. My wife does, like, yoga. We go for hikes. She does spinning, uh, more yoga, and more yoga. She, she's not on rollerblades. Like, keep oh, them off the oh, rollerblades. Sh- sorry okay? about that. She, she doesn't uh, need to be doing all that. that. I mean, That's dangerous. Kate, Kate and I do all kinds of that stuff. That is together. just, oh, risk you, taker. Would you go, do you go, you hang out with your girl and do yoga together? That's fucking awesome. <laughs> Hot you hang yoga. Out, you go to yoga with all women and you're the one guy in there with your wife. Hot That's yoga. fucking awesome. Hot yoga. That's fun. You couldn't fucking pay me to go do that. To I go smell, to a yoga class? I, I smell so bad. The women are too good looking. I don't know what's going to happen with me. Mm. I'm I'm so freaked out. I sweat bad. I'm gross, and like I'm like I can't look at your butt in front of me and not get horny. Stop it, dude! I ain't going. You act like this is like a bad thing to go to a yoga class. It's bad for me. I don't know how anybody can fucking. Do I don't that. know if they. I'm want, not going. They don't want you in there. They don't. But well, I don't know. Well, they probably shouldn't. Because I'm, I'm, I'm going to be weirded out, and I, I don't know. My brain's going to go a million miles an hour, and then I'm going to worry about my sweaty and grossness because. Everybody's sweating, but I actually mm-hmm. smell bad when I sweat. Oh. You haven't gone through puberty yet. When, when you do, you understand. Oh, is this. that what happens? And I smell, and oh. then I feel like everybody's smelling me, and then I get I, I worry about it, and I sweat even more, and I'm like, mm. "Fuck this shit! I'm oh. out of here okay. with a boner." Yeah, we'll look forward to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, see how that works out. When does, well, that, I ain't going. when does that happen? I ain't going. When does puberty happen? Does that happen? Well, soon? you should get it when you're like eight, like I did. Okay, but you're yeah. 42 now. Okay, 56. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, you get that barbecue pit. Oh, hold on, I'll, I'll get to. I will get that because I got I, let's, no, I'm doing some. Because comp- you act like you fucking. Go Dude, ahead. I'm go doing ahead. some competitions, like barbecue competitions. <laughs> you and Warren Sapp. I got a little. Dr- <laughs> I got a little dry rub that I'm creating on my own. For what? Hey, For what? Your kale. Like some ribs. 
You don't eat meat. Burnt ends. You don't do... I'm, I'm actually disappointed. Dude, I got you. the nicest I barbecue want, pit, you know, on the market, too. It's a waste. Too. What on a waste market. of fucking time you have. It's a waste You're of so fucking... You're so jealous about my barbecue pit. Hold I on. had the same one. Let me tell the people. No, it's a different... I've got it's a, a, high, I've got grill, a better the series. There's, like, different series. Pussy grill. Yours has, like, Tito's vodka on it. Like, that's like a... That is... I got it for free, dick. Okay, that's fine. Those ones they do for, like, specials, for displays, those are typically the lowest of the line... Uh, of the of the barbecue pits, mine's top Jesus of the line. I can do a full on pig roast, dude. You don't eat meat like a pit, you know, on the rotisserie. Yeah, 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 yeah. like a lazy Susie. Yeah, no, I can do called? that. Yeah, I can do no, that. You don't have a lazy with the Susie. nose, the snout. No, you you can't. You're gonna get a tiny pig because it won't fit on that goddamn. Thing. Oh, no, you gotta get a lazy Susie to do that. You have to have a monster. Pig roasts are the best. Dude. I got the eight fifty five. Okay, <laughs> Andy. What do you? Dude, I got the eight fifty five. What are you cooking? No, no. Now what are you saying? What are you cooking on it? What are you cooking on? I can cook anything I like want. Like what? No, what are you well, eating? No, well, no, actually, don't, no, no, don't play this game mm-hmm, with me. Mm-hmm. Don't you say I'm cooking burnt ends and I'm not going to eat them because well, I'm a motherfucking this. vegetarian. Let me tell you this. And I'm going to give them to my fucking neighbors. I do that. Mm-hmm. You don't. Let me tell you this. It came with a recipe book. Uh, so, I mean, the recipes are endless. Grass? I can do anything I want. Are on you this smoking thing. grass? In again? fact, here's the best part about it is that it comes with a uh, like an app. And I can yeah. look up on my phone. Oh. I can change the temperature and all that. From my house, when I'm doing a little brisket so fi- you for ain't... 10 hours. Show me. Show and then me. putting it no, no. in the uh, state fair competition. Oh, Jesus. Listen trying to, to win that thing. If Ty hasn't had beef brisket. Oh, he's had pork, it. No. He's had it. Has he? Oh, yeah. Show me a picture. Well, I Show, don't know if I have a picture Show me a it. picture of this kid eating goddamn no, meat. No, people have made that for him uh, in the past. But you haven't. No, <laughs> Well, have I had it? What does Ty eat every day? Does he just eat fish, kale? You know what he said today? Soup. Oh. Air. Cardboard. No, he eats everything. What's he, eat? he eats everything. Everything. What do you feed him? And he we, eats what you feed him. Clean food, though, man. Organic, you know. And so we, we keep it very, oh, really? very good. In the body house. like you. I mean, we keep. He it wants you to have a body like his daddy. Of <laughs> well, course. he's so tall. I don't want to mess no, he's that up. He's a fucking growing kid. Yes. I Put know. some goddamn meat in him, dude. dude he eats. Does he have? Al- is he allergic to meat? Uh, no, I have allergies. I went to an allergist, by the way. We, we don't, I know exactly what I'm allergic don't to. Don't fucking care. <laughs> Does this kid eat meat, man? He's growing. Yes. Andy, I'm dead serious. Well, how many different my ways mom and do I have are, to say yes? My mom and dad are worried about it. Oh, are they? now they love Ty. Okay. They oh, see him pictures of Ty. Now they do. And I'm like, Andy doesn't feed him fucking meat. And my dad's like, what? I know. He goes, Cam, remember I, I go, I grew so much. I become a fucking okay, so man. Okay, so let me ask you this. I grew hair on my face. Let me face. ask you this, because this market, I'm not going to exactly say who it is yet, because like, you know. They're worried about I want to wait. But. I can get as much as I want, really, like all month long. I mean, steaks, uh, oh, you have seafood. A spo- I have a sponsor. You don't. Don't act like you have no, a sponsor. No, it is. Don't I act swear. Like, why do you act like? It's part of the deal. Who would sponsor you? No, it's you? part of the deal. Who, what, what Dude. butcher? Hey, here's a butcher shop. God, I, I, I got to do a bunch of, okay, we got to advertise. Who am I going to get? Dude, it's part Let of the me deal. Get, uh, not, we think we should get Cam Jansen. He eats fucking tomahawk steaks like it's going on a style like a Neanderthal. He's doing this. No, let's get Andy. Let's get Andy to sponsor us. Does he eat meat? Well, no. <laughs> of course not. He's a vegetarian. <laughs> well, let's get... What the fuck would they hey, do that for you hey, for? You know, you've seen those lollipops they have? Those lollipop pork chops? You know, like they've got those too, man. And they got all this stuff. That's meat. Yeah, I know. I so know what, what it do, is. So you cook it and you so throw it away? Or? I actually have a, uh, so God. part of the deal is I got this grill and then I get like, I mean, they got a ton of seafood. You know, I eat the shit out of some seafood. Like too, what man. do you cook on seafood? Lobster, do you go to sushi? Lobster. Oh, I do get sushi do go to all su- the time. Oh, sushi? All the time. Okay, sushi's my go-to. It, uh, besides a fat tomahawk. When's baby? the last time you had sushi? Two days ago. Really? Where do you get it from? I went to like, su- do they have sushi out where you are? Like, do they even have it? In the wealthy part of Franklin you probably County? get it like from Absolutely the grocery, fucking not. Grocery store sushi. Andy. That doesn't count. Hey, Dick. You, the other day, on the radio, on my show, yeah. you fucked up. What I say? You said that you went and bought sushi from the gas station and kept it in your fucking car for two hours while we did a two-hour oh, show. I got it from yeah, Whole Foods you, across the street. And you left it in your car for two hours. For an hour. It's, oh, God. It was cold out, too, that Did day. you piss out your ass that night? No, man. No, you good. didn't need it. You didn't fucking Well, dude, it. it wasn't like 100 degrees you, outside. It was, like, it was 78 degrees. No. You left sushi in your car for two hours. One hour. Oh, God. Sushi's a delicacy. You get it from a fucking Yoshi So No or a fucking No Boo or something like that. You don't pick it up from the goddamn gas station, put it in your fucking gas car. Gas station? Or it, who gives a shit? Whole Foods. 
that's been there for two days, and you put in your goddamn car at 78 degrees when the sun's no, shining down no. in no, 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 in Missouri, and then you ate it that night, you're bragging about Dude, sushi, it's and been, it's in your fucking car. It's been like 50 degrees here every single you're day. You're getting chirped. You're going to be chirped. No, it's like 50 degrees. Chirped. All the boys, all the, everyone there in Saskatchewan, <laughs> they know what it's like. They can't even leave they don't their have house sushi right now. I know. I talk, oh. I talk to all of them, by the way. All they don't message you at all. But the deal... <laughs> They are miserable up there. Andy. Yes, they are. I'm, I'm not thinking about you. all of them. I got chirped for saying Saskatchewan. You did? On Twitter. So, Why is Cam always chirped Saskatchewan? Yeah, well, because I, of Alberta, fucking Saskatchewan, Saskatchewan. All over Andy, it. help me with that. It's, it's uh, Trailer Park Boys. Bubbles calls mm-hmm. it Scam Squatch, and I call it Saskatchewan. Yeah, yeah, it's the yeah. same fucking yeah, thing. No, I, I got know, a weird I accent. Know, Sorry. I know, I know. Sorry. We would never chirp them anyway. You know? They'll kick our ass. Every one of them. <laughs> they know. eat meat up there, Andy. Can you They'll believe kick Here's ass. what's going on here in St. Louis right now. And this, and this is a true story for all you like wonder, like in Al- BC and Alberta yeah. and stuff like that. There's a black bear like roaming around. And it is like a Sasquatch. It's a Sasquatch. Because people keep seeing it in different <sighs> spots. It's like it's been spotted like in Andy, eight or nine different places around town. Andy, it's 400 fucking pounds. I know. And all them cats up there deal with some shit. I know. But this motherfucker, you going to give him kale? Well, I don't know. No, I'm just saying, Andy, like, you are. The, here's the deal. If it tried to come near us, can I ask? Can well, I explain whatever, something to you? Yeah. The one house mm-hmm. in the poor part of Ladue where you live mm-hmm. that's not going to go to is the one house that doesn't have any motherfucking food. Well, you're the one. Fuck your house next door has curry out the wazoo. That it might be. Yes, they it do. Might not like. But that. I actually. The guy next to me, he's a curry motherfucker. Yeah, but he's got this like vegetable garden going, like organic vegetable, oh. everything you can possible think of. You like, probably go there in the middle of the night, steal their fucking cucumber, tomatoes, steal their grass. lettuce, spinach, okra. Okra. Yeah. Is that is that is that on okra? The, is that is on a very common food that, that you vegetable that you cook with like different curry dishes? Daddy, actually. daddy, what do we eat today? Radishes. Well, let's, let's see what the neighbors have in their 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 organic garden real quick. This is what we're eating. <laughs> hey, guys, I'm going shopping. Be right back. Be right back. Uh, he didn't drive anywhere. He's uh, walking next. <laughs> Why door. are you taking a basket with you? <laughs> Good God. <laughs> well, I'm going to the uh, neighbor's house. Hey, look at I, these tomatoes. You have a big backyard. Put a fucking garden back there. Well, dude. I might do it in the very back. Looks, dude, you got a big backyard for that. What an awesome garden! You no, no, there's no animals. You have a big. No, fence. there are. Andy, there's not. I want it outside of the fence. You have a. You can't. Do, Can no. I talk to you about this too? By the way, put, put it in. You can't outside. Right. The deer are gonna get it. This dude. guy that's cutting my grass right now. Okay, Hector. It was Hector. It's Jose, Jose right now. Jose. Okay. And Jose's great. He brings like three or four different people with him, and. Honestly, he's been doing this for a few months. Three bucks. And for people who don't, like, people want to, like, whatever. I'm not chirping anybody. Like, that's his name. His name is Jose. Great guy. Um, he's chirping. Very talented, as a matter of fact. I mean, he's got that's multiple gr- lawnmowers. He's got uh, riding uh, lawnmowers. He's got push mowers. Yeah, that's what they do. Uh, they got a, he's, got, he's got trimmers. I don't think they have push mowers. But uh, he's, got, he's got blowers. I mean, he's got yeah, everything he's got going on. Fucking grass I, I just got a new blower, too, by the way. Uh, battery pack on that thing. I just kind of I love using that thing too, man. All day long on my on my driveway. Andy doing housework is the oh, yeah. funniest fucking bullshit. Oh, yeah. So anyway, so Jose, I, I look at the side of my house, dude. He caught my siding like in three or four different places. Oh, yeah. And it's like a little. It's, like, the, it's broken. The, uh... So I sent him a text today. I'm like, dude, are you insured? Oh, Jesus. And Andy's he has not everybody. gotten back to me yet. Well, I need his insurance to pay for yeah, that. Yeah, he's insured. It's a new house. Yeah, he's insured. Well, how do I handle it? Do I just leave it alone? I, I got holes in my siding in the side. He, from his trimmer. That's a powerful trimmer, too. See, I'm not going to say it. No. I'm not going to say it. You're setting me up to say something. No, I'm not doing say it. it. No. How I, do I handle this with Jose? Because what he's, what he's doing is... Give this... him some fucking kale. Really? Yeah. And he'll be like, go fuck yourself because okay. I eat fucking burrito. I'll, t- <laughs> I'll take it from the neighbor's yard. I'll be like, hey, okay, hang on. I'll be right back. <laughs> Dude, like, like Hector's going to tell you. Go Can fuck I go yourself. get you some radishes? Hector's like, you don't know shit about your house. I know how to fucking fix everything. You don't even know how to use a fucking Dude. blower. So he's you don't know just, shit. I mean, just destroying the side of my house. With the weed eater? I guess, man. Yeah, it's a weed eater, dude. I mean, well, I can't believe that. He told me that I need to put metal at the bottom of my... Really? I'm like, metal? I'm kidding. Yeah, like, come on, How about bro. you put like a little... No, and this is what you do. Mm-hmm. Don't have your grass caught, set up right next to your fucking house. Put mulch there, homeboy, and set up a little trees or bushes Ooh, or something. maybe I should do that. Yeah, like... Because the, handy, the grass goes to the edge. Do you know how to cut your yard? Have you used a mower before? Oh, I have, yeah. Not not at this yard. I've never cut See, this Andy grass Andy wants before. to be a fan. I'm actually a fancy lad, but I, I don't want to be, but I kind of am. So if you, I'm, I'm in that, like, department. Dude, the way, the way he cuts the grass, it's amazing. It looks like an outfield from, like, a 
big league yeah, tell me about stadium. It. Tell like, me about Nice Well, it's got the lines in it and stuff like that. Nice I, I, I really like that, how he's doing it, you know? Tell me, tell me about Nice So Church. anyway, so he's cutting up my, uh, my, my siding, but I'm looking for this bear, man. The last time this bear was spotted, literally five minutes from my house, dude. Five, he is. He was sniffing around. He, he was. went right past your house. He's like, this fucking cheap fuck. He <laughs> doesn't eat shit. I'm going to the fucking neighbor's house, and I'm eating some fucking Well, the chicken. news people around here, they don't even know. Like They're like, uh, make sure you don't have any food laying. Yeah, exactly. And he's like, no shit. I don't eat. raccoons, <laughs> too. You know I mean? Get them raccoons. Actually, a raccoon is actually kind of a nice animal if you yeah. get it at a young age, and you could actually. So I'm not dealing it right. Right. This is a long story short. I'm not dealing it very well with uh, with Jose. I'm not having it. He's he's cutting. It Jose and Hector brand new bag house, your ass dude. Up. It's a brand new house. So yeah, but they can, you put a fucking dig it out, yeah. trench it out, yeah. dig up the fucking grass, and mm-hmm. put mulch in that mug mm-hmm. and plant some bushes. Although then you're going to get a little bit more. Fucking ants and spiders in your house yeah. and shit. So yeah, if you exactly. have exactly the moisture getting in the inside of the siding too, no, I told him that the today moisture on a well, text. He hasn't responded yet. Listen, if you have moisture, is he going to get back to me? Listen, to me. no, well, he won't. No, why would he? <laughs> Tell you go fuck yourself. <laughs> if you have moisture in the side of your house, you mm-hmm. plant a fucking tree there, dude, yeah. and it sucks it all up. And yeah. I'm putting a goddamn a weeping willow. Mm-hmm. I called my doggy willow because yeah, we, I know. I know. I got, oh God, I, this is so cute. Satan childs is what they are. I have a couple of uh, morning glory uh, maples that I'm growing right now. One in the front, one in the back. It's called a morning glory maple. So it's going to have like the yellow and the red and all that in the fall. I like that. Yeah, it'll be be nice, man. I love your house, man. It's brand new. Morning glory. Sounds nice to mine, but it's brand new. I I want to see the inside of your house. We're waiting. What is going on in there? It's there. Come over, (laughs) fuck boy. Come over. I told you to come over. You want to golf on my golf course, too? Well, I thought about that also. Is it good enough for you? It's top five. Well, it's a little further away than I'd like to go. Listen, let me tell you about golf. Here's golf to me. Yeah, tell me about it. Because golf is an all-day-long commitment. You get all banged up, and then, like, you're tired at the end of the day. You're fucking done. And then you're tired the next day. Andy, you're done. Like, how do people do this every single day? Andy, I'm trying to figure that and out. And then I've got buddies who I are like, hey, do you want to golf tomorrow morning at 7 a.m.? I'm like, no. I got to work that night. 7 o'clock. I got to do a radio no. show. I'm, ba- I'm fucked up. If I'm not having beers and stuff like that on the course, I've got no that, interest, right, man. Andy, I'm, like not, that, I'm not that serious. Andy, I'm not there yet. I'm not good enough to be not wasted. Like all these guys I know that are like, I'm going to the range to practice. I'll do that. I understand that. I'll do that. It's fun. But how good do you really need because to be? How good do you need to be? You need to be good enough to be happy. That's it. But me and you are so far away from that. I it's just want to be out in nature. I want to be cracking Andy, open a couple, I'm not of, inviting couple of seltzers you and, uh, and just chill. I'm not inviting you until I evaluate your fucking... I'm a if member. You're, I'm a member, no, you're actually, If yeah. you're fucking worse than me, mm. you ain't coming out yet. I was invited out there, by the way. I forgot to tell you. I don't think you were. No, there was a uh, golf tournament there last Monday, and I had to work. Sean Muncy. And I was invited out Muncy, there. he yeah. stopped by my house. Oh, did he? Yeah, he stopped by. He said how much he loved the podcast and ah, how, how I, I entertained him. Well, there was a him. bunch of people out there that day. Jacks, oh, a bunch and, of people. Oh, and uh, uh, Cappy. Oh. Cappy was out there, too. Yeah, Cappy was there. Yeah. But a bunch great, of, great, great but podcast. But a bunch of people from the blues and stuff like were out there. Golfing that yeah, day. Yeah. I think it was PNC, man. They're in my backyard. Yeah. I was oh, walking with the dogs. I was hitting my balls in the backyard. I'm saying hey to everybody. It was cool, man. Same I hey. love it. Yeah. So anyway, I so I, I, almost, I almost golfed out there that day, which would have been hilarious if I was golfing. I wish in you would have come by. You don't even come hey, out there. Like, make... I go to your house. You don't even I know, fucking come I know, by. I know. What do you make out of all this? Uh, all of a sudden, we're getting some hockey news. Coaches are getting fired. Yeah, they are. McDavid gets to 100 points, which is just. So it's... Pete, you want to hear the conversation? Well, people are chirping him because he's playing against the North. Is that what it is? I just, McDavid's, a, he's the best of the best, and he's so fun. Does he smile? No. Do I want him to be a little bit more like, hey, man, yeah. That's not but who he is, not who he is. I know, yeah. but I do I, can I have a perfect person, mm-hmm. please? But the point is, like, he's still playing against good teams, Toronto and stuff like that, but it's not yeah. motherfucking Vegas. It's not Colorado. It's not Colorado. It's not Carolina. It's not Tampa. It's not Florida. It's not, it's not Boston. It's not, it's not Washington. Washington. It's not Newark Islanders. It's not even St. It's St. Not Louis, man. It's not Minnesota, man. It's not Minnesota. It's not Minnesota. Not Minnesota. Who are you playing? Not even Nashville. So he's un. Oh God, we're gonna get tore up for this. It is what it is. I love all you guys. Yeah. Whatever. Beat me. I'm a fucking idiot. Calgary, Vancouver, Ottawa. Fuck. They don't give a fuck. I think they played Ottawa 35 times this year. He had 43 points against against Ottawa Ottawa and Vancouver. (laughs) Which is, but they're they're. Hey, but but no one else is doing it in that division though. No one else is getting to 100. But then uh, Crosby's getting points against. New yeah, Jersey is, and fucking um, who's the shitty other shitty fucking Jersey and uh, Buffalo Buff yep Jersey and Buffalo so it's like but okay but we're talking about Connor it's like this year's fucked up yeah 
And if anybody tells you otherwise, mm-hmm. they're fucked up. I know. This year is fucked I know. Even Austin up. Matthews, who got to 40 goals and whatever. How good are they? The, the, but those two guys are elite players. They already were elite players. Not like them. It's not like they're just careering it. But How good is their team? They're, they're, they're that good that they can do that. No one else in the division is putting up those type no, of numbers. Andy. Man, including guys on their own team. Andy, no doubt about that. How good is fucking Toronto versus Vegas Golden Knights? I don't know. I think Toronto maybe would lose in five. They lose in five. I'd put money on yeah. that. I, I think, think they would lose in five. Oh, God, they're going to kill us up there. I, listen, oh, they got to know that. Christ, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Hey, listen, Mitch uh, Marner is I'm now sorry. one of my favorite players in the he's league. He's a great dude. Cool. Top five, Austin Matthews. I mean, he's an American, I, man. We love Austin Andy, Matthews. We watch Vegas. Yeah. They are yeah. motherfucking good. Colorado's next level. And they're big. Yeah. And they're mean. Yeah. And they have double goaltending. I know. Like, I know. fuck. I know. What the fuck you going to do to Their us? defense is so good. They're so oh, mobile. They're Fucking fast and mm-hmm. big and mean and structurally sound. And they yeah. have Pete DeBoer, who coached me. He goes 100 miles an hour, but then you're defensively structured, and yeah. you're like, fucking all. No, they're good, man. They sign everybody. Oh, and they're ready to win. And they've got all these players. Well, their window is now. Their window is now. If they don't win this year, they don't win is. next year. I don't know what the future holds you're right. for Vegas, man. So, like, I'll fucking sign Petra. I want to win mm-hmm. and win now. Well, it's obvious that they want to, but they're not going to win this year. I will say it right now. Who's Vegas- going to beat them? I think Colorado will beat them. <laughs> I really do. No. You don't think they will? Way. If anybody's going to beat them, it's going to be the Blues first round okay. because there's fucking well, psycho And, and it could be. You're right. Here, here's the deal about St. Louis and Vegas. I didn't want to like go too home and stuff like that. I don't that. want to either, but okay. go ahead. Go ahead. But, go but ahead. Uh, listen, to me, it's not going to be a shocking upset of St. Louis wins. They've got way more Stanley Cups in their dressing room than Vegas has. There I don't even know if Vegas has 16. any. Oh, I got th- Vegas has like Martinez, right, who won with, Scored with a L.A. Game winner. I don't know who else they have. Who? Well, yeah, Flower, Petro, obviously. Petro. Has, yeah, Petro won. And, uh, so they've got some guys who have won, obviously, in Vegas. But St. Louis, I don't know, man. Uh, it, it, it ha- things have to go really, really well for them to beat Vegas. Right. And I'm not going to sit here and make any prediction that they would beat Vegas, if that's going to be their first-round opponent. But if they do, I'm not going to be shocked, man. I won't be overly, su- you know, overly surprised. Will I be a little bit surprised, mildly surprised? Yeah, because you don't expect a team like Vegas to go home in the first round. I just, if Vegas beats the Blues... For- First round, there ain't that nothing stopping them until they hit Tampa, mm. and Tampa. Well, and Tampa's Flo- getting the big boys I, back. Man. They're getting big boys. They had Coochie back. Fucking mm-hmm. doing a shit. Uh, fucking Patty gets his first suspension. Good. That's his second and, second suspension. First hearing. And it, his first hearing. Maybe his first hearing. Good for you, motherfucker. So he like broke free from you. the linesman. That's what he did. That's hilarious. Good. The motherfucker speared you earlier. What's his name? Montour. Yeah, Montour. I, like, I like him. Yeah. I oh yeah. I fucking take him. And on they my used team to be either. teammates too, dude. And in Anaheim. Yeah. And so Patty just loses it. And he gets a game. Everybody's well, like, well, I think Tom he Wilson. said something, man. He crossed the line with something that he's he fucking said. chirping Patty. And dude. we've seen Patty snap. Patty will fucking snap on you. He's not he going to kill you, but he'll snap on you. No, Patty's got a little bit like. He, like, he doesn't give like, a fuck anymore. More like the Oakville comes out. That Hoosier. You know what I'm saying? He's a fucking it's like, Hoosier. It, 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 it like transitions from like a hockey fight to like, dude, I'm going I'm straight up you. South County Thank in your you. ass, I'm a man. South County motherfucker. That's right. I don't play this game. So like, no I don't more. care. Like you want to hide behind the refs and, and hide got, behind NHL rules, dude. I don't you. really give a shit. And no, I'm going to kick your I ass. I got two fucking cups in a row. Don't mm-hmm. you fucking chirp me, right. fuck boy. That's right. I like that Montour, but don't yeah. you fucking chirp me. No, I like Patty, man, the way he handles himself. You ever notice that wherever Patty plays, he's always best friends with like the best players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like he and Hedman. He's like he's like chaser, <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Like he's like he and, chaser. I noticed like he and Hedman are kind of like doing their thing. I like to hang game. out with the shitty guys because it made me feel better. He about hangs myself. out with all the big boys. He and O'Reilly <laughs> were best friends here in St. Louis. Yeah. He and McDavid, best friends. <laughs> I know. I, it's how it is, man. Like he and he and Perry. I love Perry. And Perry was good. I love Perry, man. Perry was fucking. He was so weird at the beginning at, when he was eighteen, nineteen. When I was rooming with him and shit, Andy was Perry, he David Perron. Oh, no, I'm talking about Corey Perry. Oh, Corey Perry. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, yeah, I got yeah, confused. Yeah. yeah, Corey Perry's fucking awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Little skinny fuck. I used to tri- We used to play. I used to play against him in, in mm-hmm. AAA to juniors. And I'm like, you're just. Hey, let me just like say this because broad. the Tom Wilson thing, <laughs> yeah. we haven't really talked about it. And I know it's already been talked about too. Oh. Too, whatever. But. You know our steam. I want people to know that. Like, one thing that. Like, Tom Wilson and Panarin, they talked after the game. Yeah, they're buddies, dude. They're and they're like buddies. And. Wilson's like, yeah, this dude's an absolute beauty. Like, I mean, he's a I sick player. Him. He knows I got a ton of respect for yeah. Panarin. So everybody goes crazy about it. Just don't it. jump it on my back, Perry. Or whatever. Hey, just don't do that. Andy, if you Panarin, jump on my back. Brad man, you can't do that. I'd curb stomp your fucking ass. Would you? No. Well, you're dirty, man. I've, I've seen what you I've, do. He, I, I'm done with that. Yeah. I'm a good person now. Mm. No, that, I am. That was dirty. That, that was, was dirty. dirty. 
I'm sorry. You have a hearing for that. I too. did have a hearing. I but did. Wilson is just kind of like, okay, I don't know. Everybody just flipped out. I know, dude. It wasn't even that big. And that's why, if you read the statement on that, and even, okay, so here, people are asking me, well, fucking Pat, you got a game. Tom Wilson tried to get, well, here's the deal. There's 15 different fucking scrums a game. Mm-hmm. Every game. Guys get thrown down. It happened 15 times that fucking same night. Oh, with Sidney Crosby, oh with everybody, the same situation. Yep. Did the same situation happen with Patty that night? It, no. Patty broke away at the end of the game, mm-hmm. broke away from the refs, and jumped a, the fucking actually, guy. It's actually, it's actually a rule, like in the rule book. You, you can't, can't do you that. You can't do that. So, like, and is there a rule book in a scrum where you, a guy jumps on you and you throw him down? There's not. <laughs> I know. For being Scrum's too strong. For being too strong. Sorry, he's big. Yeah, I know. And Wilson, and sorry listen, you're not big. He's got that reputation. He's never going to be able to shake it. So, I mean, the reality is when Tom Wilson's in those situations, he's just not going to get the benefit of the doubt. And dude. Andy, we both didn't. We don't ever want to see like a fucking Panarin. Well, I'm we glad Panarin adore. didn't get it. Panarin, I've always said, he's the most underrated, so awesome. true elite oh, superstar in the game. And he's with fucking Putin and shit. Yep. And it's like, fuck, I love that guy. He high kicks it every time he scores. Mm-hmm. He's sexy. He's loud. Yeah. He's cool for Broadway. I don't want him hurt. Yeah. But don't jump on a big boy's back. I like that Parizov, too. Caprizov. Oh, KK. fuck is he fucking KK cool 97. He's About cool. time Minnesota had somebody cool. Russians are cool, man. I Russians mean, are have they always, has it always been that way? I don't know. No. Man. Since Fedorov, maybe. No, well, Fedorov changed. Yeah. No, Burray changed the game. Burray and Fedorov. And then Fedzi fucking and changed Mogil- it with the night. And Mogilny, the Mogil- three of them, you know. Mogilny was more, heart, more stoic. He Mogil- was. I loved he him. Was. He was. Not as loud. so nice to me. Yeah, dude. but he scored 76. He was so nice. No, no, no. He scored 76. He scored 76. Timo. No, he scored 70. They both did. They both did. Okay. Yeah. What, well, McGillney had. I didn't like when Burry changed his number to 96. I wanted mm-hmm. him to keep 10. Yeah. But he went 96 and he had 86. Yeah, it's okay. And that was cute. That's okay. And that's when Burry had the megas yeah. and that long my fucking hair. And they did their shit. Remember that? And Vladdy's, or Pavel's dad trained mm-hmm. me in Jersey. He's your Vladimir. skating coach. So, I don't think he likes it when you say that, though. Like, he doesn't like that. Yeah. He doesn't like, like you like telling everyone that he's yeah, responsible he for you. He played 10 years in the NHL. Oh, he did? Okay. Well, yeah, good. Well, is that maybe, good, is hey, that good listen, Andy? Well, that, that's how good he is. Is that good, then? It's very good. Okay, thanks. That he was able to do that. So I'm that. sure Vlad, he's like, there you go, Cam. Yeah, yeah, You're not that good of a player, but no, you can skate. No, that's pretty good if, he, yeah. if he's able to do that. Don't make me brag about myself. Yeah, I know. I know. He helped me, and it worked. How about Jack Eichel? He's like slamming Buffalo again. Listen, let me just. Oh, Let me just like Andy. make this as easy to understand as possible. Oh. Okay, some relationships just aren't meant to be. Totally. Like, it's time to go our separate ways. Like, Jack Eichel doesn't want to be there. At the end of the day, they shouldn't want Jack Eichel Thank if you. he doesn't want to be there. They can get a king's ransom. They've got so much work to do just to get back to respectability. There it that is. That they can get closer to getting there by wheeling and dealing Jack Eichel, who, again, doesn't want to be there. He hasn't wanted to be there for a couple of years. I don't see that situation getting any better. Would you want, so he's got to go. Would you want to be on the Pittsburgh Penguins in 2006? No. They were fucking terrible. Remember that? They were the worst team in the league. One of them. Yeah, I know. Okay, would you but want to be on... That's when Sid the Kid was good. I know, I'm just saying. They were fucking terrible. And everybody's like, give me a... Would you want to be in early 90s Red Wings? They haven't done anything, and they couldn't figure it out. And all of a sudden, what happened? Would you want to be on the, the Devils when they... And they all of a sudden, they figured it out, like... Shit changes in the NHL. Mm-hmm. Okay? It all comes around somehow. Teams find a way. Yeah. You are the worst... Of the worst, and you draft a fucking kid, or you just get a couple of signings, or you develop the way, and yeah. things it's turn, and all of a sudden, it's just not working for a long time, and you haven't won. Yeah. And it's just like everything combined. But when I'm saying this, the hockey karma in my, karma in my mind, mm-hmm. when you have an organization like that that was willing to spend money, mm-hmm. that has a fan base that doesn't give a fuck, and they're crazy, things are going to happen. Well, you see those relationships. I, mean, I don't know. I mean, like I can be like a relationship. There, I've seen lots of relationships that just don't work out. They break up all the time. They fight. Then they try to get back together. They try to force it. It's just not meant to be. Yep. And in the case of Jack Eichel, it's, it's, it's not working. You're not happy. Okay, it's not working. But so we got I, we, we got to get this thing going in a different direction. He's not happy Buffalo with the successful. he's not happy with the medical team. Now it's gone into like the medical stuff. Sometimes you just find different things that you want to like bring up is in it, an effort to get yourself out of the situation. Is it better for hockey mm-hmm. for a team that has a huge following like Buffalo Sabers? They do. Yeah, they do. To be fucking shitty, or a team that sucks like Arizona to be shitty. And just not relevant. Or is it better for Arizona to be fucking huge? Like, wait, wait. Say okay, that again. Okay, 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 phrase it so I understand oh, what geez. the hell you're okay. trying to say. 
Is it? Do you? If you could trade off a team that has a fucking huge following or a shitty following, and the big following is really shitty, and they get all this negative attention. But Arizona's really successful. But Arizona, and, and they don't get good. that much stuff. Like, yeah. what would you rather have? Does Arizona just go kick away and go I fuck don't know. yourself? Just sometimes, if you become Buffalo. really good, like you, you immediately find a following. Like the fans show up. Arizona's a fucking joke. I'm sorry, Biz. I know, man. I love you, man. And talk, it's out I, of there now, and too. And Biz is like, they're not playing. They're almost in the play. No, no, they're fucking done. Would he say something on the tweet? I don't so know. Funny. He's, he has to play it cool. He but does. But they he suck. Does. I get Talk, it's like, I'm a fucking dunzo. They're fucking boring. I know. I like I Billy know. Armstrong, though. And I you know do. what? I do. No and I like their owner. I was texting with their owner Great the guy. other day, yep. man, actually. Yeah, yeah. He's cool. Get his ass on Okay, we're trying to work that out to get him to come on. Get his ass on. We love the owner. We need a couple owners on, by he the way. He was cool. Andy. He was cool. You know, Andy gets he's, the he's, owner. He's trying to work it out. He's trying we want to, the owners. He's trying to, like, you know, get this team to, Andy, they just, to get on the, the right track. Are they going to do something? Because you know what? Like, with the escrow and shit, like, it's, yeah. I don't even know how it works anymore. To be I don't honest. know. Billy Armstrong, man, he's one hell of a talent evaluator. Everybody in the league They looks, just don't have any draft picks. Everybody in the league looks at Arizona like, you're fucking holding us down, dude. Like, you're... Really? Yeah, they don't... Well, in normal... Who's circ- saying that? In normal... It's a great circ- circ- place to visit. Listen to me. In normal circumstances, when you draw 10,000 people a night, your escrow fucks all the players. Your what? Your escrow. Oh. Fuck. I thought you said escrow. Your escrow <laughs> fucks all the players, meaning yeah. like that little I big know. chunk of money. Do right. you remember the contracts they gotta, they gotta you got? Those teams, oh, no, yeah. you didn't. But when you get your paycheck and you see the escrow taken out of there, yeah. you're like, well, fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you devils mm-hmm. at the time. Mm-hmm. Fuck, because they didn't promote. And, and you know, they, they bitch them. Fuck you, Arizona. Yeah. Fuck you, Florida. Yeah. Figure it the fuck out because yeah. you're costing me money. Florida's good now. They're really good. Yeah. Is he going to get Jack Adams? Oh, he should. Who? Q? Q, baby. He should. He'd get my vote. Who else gets it? Um, Brandon Moore is up there, homeboy. Probably probably the head coach there in Minnesota. But yeah. Everson. Yep. Dean Everson. Yeah. Kid guy. That Dean, I mean, do we know a lot about him? My favorite coach, though, is DJ Smith from Ottawa. Fuck, That's my I guy. Left heat down the pipe, homie. <laughs> I love him. That's my guy. I just Fucking like hearing Windsor. him talk, man. He's cool. It sounded like he just had like beers and wings until like three in the morning out. the night he's before. He's got no teeth. It's fu- he's a badass. <laughs> Defenseman, left heat. I could tell his players like Windsor him. Windsor, motherfucker. Yeah. Some guys don't who, don't, who aren't playing, you know. I understand that some of the young guys who haven't gotten a chance. All right, let's anyway. get to a Glenn Healy. Glenn Healy was cool, man. I used to like watching him on television. Yeah. Um, opinionated. Very much He's so. done a lot of stuff, though, working with the NHLPA, yep. working with the league, now running the alumni. Did he see pissed that we didn't ask him about his career more? No, I think he's cool. We asked him okay. about it a little bit, yeah. I just feel like he did a lot of other interviews, and we, we don't. Listen, I, no, I had questions he, for him. He, and we did talk about okay. his career, and he was on a Stanley Cup winning asking. team with the New York yeah. Rangers, and... Uh, yeah, made his name there with the Islanders too. Yep. I think won a real big playoff series, right? Yeah, in three ninety three yeah, against fucking Pittsburgh. So, and again, but a lot of people recognize him and know him from his time doing television, exactly. where he was opinionated. And we like people who give opinions, mm-hmm. including Glenn Healy, who joins us on this edition of the Cam and Strick Podcast. As always, brought to you by CarShield and CarShield dot com. Cam eight hundred eight five seven two four eight one eight hundred eight five seven two four eight one. Hey, call CarShield today. And uh, see what they can do for you. I just got an alert on my phone, by the way. My barbecue. <laughs> it's like Get the fuck it's, out of no, here with this stupid it's at, shit. It's at 400 degrees right now. 400 degrees. What are you cooking? Air? Uh, we got some. We got a bunch of stuff, actually. That oh, we're I don't want to have <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's going to be good eating tonight. Oh, though. it's going to be good eating hey, tonight. CarShield and CarShield.com. 800-857-2481. Give them a call today and uh, see what they can do for you. You never know when you're going to need it. Dude, I can tell you that. I don't give a shit what kind of car you have, man. Shit goes down. And sometimes it's fucking embarrassing, like what happened to me. My star didn't go out. Everybody's like waving me goodbye. Like, bon voyage. Yeah. Like the Titanic. Bon, bon voyage. Like, I'm on a Titanic. Like, goodbye. And you're throwing all that, like, confetti mm-hmm. and shit. Yeah. That's what I was doing to the people. I and they're know, like, can't we love you? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, fuck. And I'm like, uh. And I just, like, duck my know, head that's down for three hours. That's embarrassing. Oh, fucking they embarrassing. Got it, Rick, hurt, it hurt our podcast. They got Ric Flair doing the. Uh, commercials ice tea doing the commercials and uh we, we love the commercials we love car shield love the support that they give us here on the chemistry podcast we again 800-857-2481 we'll, we'll hook it up we should do a commercial work it them. out we'll fucking do it what do you what do you guys want like we'll bring the heat <laughs> we'll bring the heat 800-857-2481 hey keep it handsome.com check it out the bundles are still in play 
We, we got the uh, the Andy bundle. What's the other bundle called? Uh, the CJ, CJ and Dog Sexy. Oh, by the way, with Car Shield, you mentioned the promo code CAM. You'll save 10%. Yeah. Yeah. So be yeah. sure to CM. do that. Save a little bit of money. Uh, keep it handsome. Mention the promo code CAM and Strick. You're going to save a bundle as well on one of the bundles. So check those out and uh, support the Montreal Resource Center. Anti-bullying, baby. Anti-bullying, baby. It. Fight ugly. Hashtag fight ugly. Keep it handsome. I use the beard moisturizer several times a day. Fucking In fact, waste. I gave it to Jose when he came over. I he doesn't shouldn't have a beard either. I shouldn't have given it to him. You don't have. You give the beard moisturizer. You use it on your non beard, yeah, and then you yeah. give it to Hector. No, who Jose, have a beard either. Jose. He doesn't have one. Hector and I had to split ways. It was it was actually very similar to like a up. Buffalo situation. It was a similar situation, but Jose, he brings his whole crew with him. Man, they're very quick. They do a great job. Uh, but they're but they're messing up my sighting, so we got to work that out. But I gave him some beard moisturizer. Good and, uh, for the non beardy. Yeah, well, no, he's got a. So beard. now he's really gonna fuck your no, house. He's up. got a beard. How about you give him like some of that air that you're gonna cook tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Just, you want to eat? You hungry? You hungry? Oh yeah. Oh, you have nothing. I'm still waiting to find out if he's insured. What movie I, is that from? I was told from? to ask if he's insured. Oh, here's a children's movie. I remember. Remember the movie fucking um 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 finding um, nemo no 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 the uh peter pan oh yeah hook yeah remember captain hook Cap- yeah. no it's a hook yeah. and they're they're at the big meal and it's all they're eating mm-hmm. nothing yeah and they're, they're, they're having a bowl and there's yes. nothing yes. but then they have to use your imagination mm-hmm. is that what the fuck I don't you know, man. do at I the mean, house i got wood pellets oh god that poor i got wood family. pellets being shipped in from alberta it's just and british wife, columbia is this the wife real this? real wood pellets is this the wife owning you no do she's you so really, excited no 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 very excited do you really want to eat meat but she's like, no, we need to be really healthy. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, okay. I, you, for sure. Yeah. What do you want to do? Is that what's going on? Well, we'll see what happens for Father's Day. We'll see what I have coming up. Oh, you get a hot dog? I got a recipe a book. There's dog? a lot of different oh, things geez. that I'm considering Don't even right invite now. me because I ain't I'm coming. considering a number of different options. Don't you ever invite me to a fucking a cookout of fact, of your fucking house. Speaking of options, there's lots of them at Bellman and Bellman.com oh, as true. well. That's true. Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. The Cadillac, the Buick, the GMC. I'm looking at that Cadillac Escalade. I talked to Dan Bellman yesterday, man. I'm just like, hey, we're trying to work this out yeah. uh he knows i want to escalate and uh and we're probably going to get one eventually here very very soon let's hope we get the get a big get ass escalate, escalate dude yes, know, you got I fucking know. three kids yes. you got hockey bags yes. you got fucking soccer ball you got all yeah. kinds of shit yeah you don't have any like you know like charcoal or anything back but there, again but it's the customer service it's the customer it's service yeah no swinging dicks cruising around like mm, fucking shirt i'm gonna fucking flirt with your wife like no no just like help my wife out and get in a nice vehicle and be nice to her well that's kind of that's can, kind can, of the name of the that, game you dude. Fuck, that's you kind of what they fucks. give you hey just in time for the warm weather though uh, and the family trips man they've got stuff for the family trips which you need this time of year big selection family friendly vehicles oh, they got yes. the mid-size crossovers full-size suvs Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Cadillac, Buick, GMC all in Troy, Missouri Buick. check out the all-new five-passenger Buick Envision <gasps> What or the, the legendary Jeep Grand Cherokee oh. 7 and 8 passenger. You got the Buick God. Encore, the GMC Acadia. Those are oh, sick, too. Lord. The Dodge Durango and Durango. the full-size Kings of the Road, the GMC Yukon. Dang. The Cadillac Escalade and the all-new Jeep Wagoneer. Have you checked oh, that out? Oh, motherfucker. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Check my that fucker. out. I want to yeah. go to the Grand yeah. Tetons. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go to the motherfucking Grand Tetons, baby. I know, I know. Get my mind right. Take that fucking Dodge up there with the fucking dualies. So mm-hmm. in case it fucking snows, I'm like, get on with yourself. Yep. I'll get out of this fucking jam. Yep. I want them dualies, And they're boy. big supporters of hockey, man. So support yeah. support our boy, Dan Bellman. And, awesome uh, guy. And do it you know, in time for the summer, too. Yep. Because yep, they flat yep, out yep. get it done. All right, Daredevil Hockey. Um, skate lacerations, dude. These are, things are so scary. I just cringe. I'm watching these kids oh, play. No. They're falling over on top of each other. I just hope nothing bad happens. But I, know. I don't worry about it with my kid because he's protected. He's got the dare, a daredevil yeah. gear on, you know? So again, he's just skate, not eating right. Well, good. No, but he's fine. He's fine. He's, got, he's protected because he's wearing he's uh, eating, the daredevil. Listen, you mentioned the promo code uh, Cam and Strick. You're going to save 25%. Daredevilhockey.com. That's the website. Skate lacerations, the number one cause of emergency room visits of my all young leg, hockey dude. players. Dude. Look at I know. My leg. Did I show you my arm here when I was Andy, skated? No, <laughs> nothing happened to you. <laughs> nothing I, it really did. happened. You I have guess. no scars in any part of your body. No, you've done nothing to get a fucking scar. Where'd it go? Stop. Oh, there it is. No. Yeah, look at that. 
You see that? Jesus I got skated on by the linesman. Oh, gosh. It was at Queenie oh, Park. Queenie Park. Rollerblading. You packed house, Jesus too. Christ. It's a roller. It's you a fucking roller rink. Packed house. You couldn't even get in. Couldn't so even get in. Couldn't even get in. <laughs> <laughs> Daredevilhockey.com. <laughs> hey, uh, check it out, though. Youth sizes, adult sizes. If you are a uh, men's league hockey player, man, listen, you want to be protected, yeah, too. Man. Like, don't don't, don't don't be a hero out there. Dude, you got to go to get, fucking hospital and get know, fucking right. zipped you for deal 40? With that? Fuck you. No way. I want to see some pictures. Pictures taken too of people who have ordered it. Yep, me too. And NHL players are doing this. Players up there in uh, Canada, the CHL, are certainly now uh, a big part of this Daredevil hockey movement as well. So be sure to check that out. Uh, before we get to uh, Glenn mm-hmm. Healy, mm-hmm. Uh, you know, guys, we got to keep this thing going. Anybody you know, anybody up in Canada, Saskatchewan, they want to be sponsors, help, uh, you want us to pump up whatever you guys got going. You want to follow us on social media, Andy on Twitter and mm-hmm. Facebook and Instagram. I uh, I got all that too, cameo, all that stuff. We'll bring the heat for you. Yeah, it's fun. So we uh, we need to keep this thing going. So just if you, anybody wants to help out, yeah. it is what it is. All right, one I more thing. That, one more thing. The uh, the ultimate hockey fans. Yeah, baby. Yes, I have it in Ty's uh, hockey room. Oh, hey, it, it. it really cools it down, man. I'll say that it cools it. it down in there, and people take notice of it. I mean, they're like, "Wow, where'd you get that?" These things are incredible. You can customize it with any team that you want. They are NHL licensed. Yep. In fact, you see their commercials on NHL.com and time. NHL Network, too. All the man. time. I mean, they're everywhere. He's got great hair. He does, man. Former goaltender, yep. Paul. He just gets it done, though. Camonstrickpod.com slash ultimate hockey fans.com. Or is it Camonstrickpod slash. UltimateHockeyFans.com. That's what it is. www.camandstrickpod slash UltimateHockeyFans.com. So check that out. Uh, mention the promo code Cam and Strick. You're going to save a ton of money on your shipping, free shipping. That's nice. Oh, my God. Because it, it's, it's not a small package. No. And it costs a lot to ship these, no matter if you're going to Canada, wherever you are, U.S. Um, you'll save 100% of the shipping costs when you mention the promo code Cam and Strick. Again, the Daredevil Hockey promo code Cam and Strick is all caps. So if it doesn't work the first time, just try all caps, yeah, whatever, easy and, baby. And, and and make it happen. But uh, get the new ceiling fan. If you're a Bruins fan, you can get one. A Habs fan, Maple Leafs fan, Canucks, whatever. Minnesota Wild, L.A. Kings, Arizona, Washington uh, Capitals, uh, St. Louis Blues, whatever you want. Have it customized and take your man cave, bar, kid's bedroom to the next level. Yeah. All right. Glenn Healy. Cool guy, man. He's a, a bagpiper, too. Did we get into so many different things with this yeah, guy? man. Talk about a little Scott, Scotland. Yeah, very accomplished. Yes. I love going up Western to Western Michigan dude. University. The craziest weather in the world is in Scotland, yeah. dude. All right. I'm telling you. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. For sure. Yeah, you well, know. not in the yeah, world, yeah. because Antarctica would probably be that. Uh, but, yeah. But uh, but Scotland, it's 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 40 yeah. and sleet, and it's oh. snowing, and then it's sunny and beautiful. Yeah, I've seen and that with the golf like, courses and stuff like that. You haven't been up there, so shut the fuck up. I've been up there a million times, and I'm telling you, no, you it's have crazy. not. It's I haven't lived there. To Scotland? Yes. Oh yeah, you did live up there. Sit your that ass. wasn't in Scotland. That was in England. We played in Scotland every did other you? day. I, you, There's you, ten teams, half of them in Scotland. Do you drive from England to Scotland? Yes. Really? Nottingham. How long's the drive? You Six think? hours. Is get out of here. Andy. It is fucking beautiful. Do they talk like Brits? Or oh, they're no. Com- uh, no, different. Or like Irish? No, you can understand. Uh, you can barely understand them, to be honest. Really? Oh, it depends on where you live there. Just yeah. like if you live in like good old bar where I live mm-hmm. down there, you talk mm-hmm. like they, yeah. or you talk where you're like, I'm a fancy lad. So it's like no, different. No, I'm barbecuing. I'm, no, you're not. I have a brand new. Stop it. Stop. Um, no. I forgot You got the... nothing. You got, you're barbecuing nothing. You're acting like Dude, you're, I got the you eight, got nothing. I got the A55. I need to, I need Ty at my house. <laughs> I need to feed this kid. I, I want to see I, which I have one a, you have. I have. I have a ton of them. A ton? Yeah. I got oh, like more than one? Yes. Do you really? You I barbecue that much? Yeah, but there's different things. Are you making for... food for your kids? Or I don't understand what you're doing. No, I'm the one that fucking cooks for my neighbors. You stole that oh, from that's me. True. You ain't cooking for nobody because you cook air. No. Praveen next door, I'm probably going to cook for him. They're eating curry. Well, we he might be. That. He might be. But, I mean, he's, he's just. eating curry. He's growing okra. That's all I know. And, and we're friends stealing, again because of it. You're stealing it. Fucking cheap ass motherfucker. Let's get to Glenn Healy on this edition of the Cam and Strick podcast. Hello. Heels. Glenn, Jake, Glenn what's with two up? ends. <laughs> there we go. That's right. <laughs> I up, never man? forget that. Glenn thought he or uh, uh, Cam thought he was misspelling your name. I you know, know, man. No, I, I do that oh, a lot. No. I do that a lot. Where you at, man? Where you at right now? 
Uh, well, I'm in uh, Ajax, Ontario, which is uh, about five kilometers from a nuclear fucking reactor, oh, ooh. <clears throat> and uh, just outside Toronto. We're we're about thirty minutes outside Toronto, so I actually got a great spot. We got a couple acres on Lake Ontario, which is great. You can't swim in it; it's you know minus fifty. But um, beyond that, it's, <laughs> it's plus a, a good plus a good nuclear space power plant. <laughs> Are there? Yeah, like- well, that goes up. I won't even know it's gone up. I mean, just <laughs> and. Uh, uh, we're locked out of our office, right? We've got, uh, you know, city of Toronto runs the building. Well, up here, I mean, you guys, you guys had no lockdown basically. And we were, we're the opposite. We, you know, right. We're still under house arrest. I mean, you can't, you can't have, can't go to a pub. You can't go to a restaurant. You can't have more than five people in your house. I know it's so crazy. And you know, listen, we just hit record and we just get going. We just have conversation just like this, Glenn. So it's really not, yeah. it's nothing like no real huge he production, but, uh, um, no, I've seen your guys stuff. It's good. Yeah, Great. Thanks, yeah. I appreciate yeah. that. It's very classy too. And, and, <laughs> and you, <laughs> but you know what though? You get like, off the rails a little bit. I've seen, a, I've seen the, I've seen the trolley get off the track just uh, every once in a while. It happens. That's okay. We get it back on. We, we put it, it we, we put it back on, but the, um, we were like that. I mean, it was it was like locked down, but I don't think it was anything close to what's going on there. Where I, I feel like, like, what do they ticket you? Like, can you yeah. get busted? Like, what happens if you had like say ten people in your house? Oh, you, you, there's no question. Like large gatherings, they're they're coming knocking on your door. Um, they they actually wanted the police to to be able to pull people over if you're driving somewhere to see if you're going somewhere essential. And all the police unions went, go fuck yourself. We're not doing that. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but they made that rule. Like the premier said, hey, this is the way the police powers are going to expand. And it was the police unions that said, no, 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 we're not doing that. So they're not doing that. Uh, but, you know, if you've got a nosy neighbor and you've got, you know, 15 cars in your driveway, so- someone's coming by. Oh, wow. they're going to see what's going on. It was, oh, yeah. No, it, was, it was like that even here. They would be like, oh, bit. my God, the neighbors had all these I cars know. outside. And, like your family. And, and, you know, the, the first person, I'll never forget, it was right before the NHL season was paused. And there was a person in St. Louis that had been diagnosed with COVID-19. And it was like the lead story on the news. The family was like hiding from the media. They'd left <laughs> town. Oh, and, God. And all the other parents, like apparently he was at a, uh, a, 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 a high school prom where they were all taking pictures. Yeah. And all the other parents, they wanted to kill this guy. And he left town. He went into hiding. Hide. And yeah. that's not I, happening not quite it. as much. Yeah. You know, now we're gotten, you know, we're gotten it, past but that. But there is a shame to it, right? Like if you get yeah. it. I, like people get shamed, like oh, oh my gosh, you got COVID. Mm-hmm. You know, nor like when we had the flu, they're like, oh, I hope you're okay. Oh, fuck, I mean, jeez, you know, you were in bed for a couple of days. You get COVID now, people look at you like you've created some monster in society. It, it's, it's shameful. Mm-hmm. It's the walk of shame. I feel like Game of Thrones. The throwing vegetables at you, you know, shame, shame, <laughs> walking naked. That's, shame. I had that nightmare the other day. Good <laughs> Lord Almighty! Yeah. Why well, you? Uh, we get uh, man. We get all these. Um, you know, I think the big the, the biggest fuck up with this whole thing is like they never preach healthiness exercise, and I, and I know it's hard to do that when you're locked down. But like, I we Annie and I keep our DMs open. We we talk about anti bullying. We do all this kind of shit, and we have Canadians reach out to us every day, multiple, and they're just like, I can't do anything. My wife fucking hates me. My they're like, oh, stay yeah. home with your kids. Well, my kids hate me. I mean, have you ever watched your family, like, fight for money? That's the worst feeling in the world. Not to mention you can't go outside. So, I don't know. Like, they could have done a better job of just doing something to build your endorphins. Well, we, we we did say till death do us part. We didn't say 24-7. I'm just letting you know at the altar, okay? Oh, so. Hey, and anyway. what do you think as a guy that uh, you've been a long-time broadcaster? I mean, and, and people who don't know, you run the NHL alumni. We're going to get into that because it's an important position, yep. and uh, you're a great face for the NHL alumni, and there's no doubt about that. But uh, like when you see Robin Leonard come out, and he's talking about um, – mental illness and you know just kind of the situation the players are in right now where they can't do a whole lot and how that could contribute to mental illness or impact people who are dealing with promise things what what do you think about that when you saw him say that well i i really like honestly if, if there's anybody who feels good about what's going on through this past 15 14 months something's wrong with you like you shouldn't feel right about what's going on here Right. This has been a challenge that none of us have faced. And and Robin, there's no filter for Robin. Like when you meet him on the street and talk to him, he there's no speed bump between the brain and the tongue. He just he'll let you know. And he just let people know that, you know what, this just is not 
that's not mentally healthy for anybody and for players, you know, that <clears throat> will go home and turn on the TV and let's look what's going on in Florida and they can't go to their buddy's house to have dinner and yet they can sit beside him in the locker room and you have a hard time making sense of it, right? So if Edmonton comes to Toronto to play, you know, Connor McDavid will have his dinner and take his mask off to eat and then he'll put his mask back on and Leon Dreisaitl, who might be sitting beside him, takes his mask off now and he eats. Like, are you really telling me that's button proof? Really? It's like they got this thing squashed because you took your mask off to eat and the other guy kept his on. So I, I'm sure like these players who went into the bubble <clears throat> last year, uh, they probably look at it and they say, we, enough, like no mas, we've had enough. You know, we've, it's not what we signed up for. I, I know like even a team like the Leafs wanted to get everyone on a flight, fly to the Cleveland Clinic, have the Cleveland Clinic come onto the plane, uh, vaccinate them, leave the plane, and they fly back. Same, the charter plane and the league, you know, basically said, no, that's not happening. Really? So you, you can sense the frustration. Uh, now, I, I don't know about the U.S. players. Maybe they're all vaccinated. Like, you guys have more vaccinations yeah. uh, than you've got, you know, than you know what to do with. We don't. I mean, we're, you know, we have a vaccination clinic with 15, and it, it, it's like going to the Who concert try to fucking get in oh, i mean it's like oh, here you go without so, seeing the concert of course no dude they, yeah. they have they have like the dome downtown andy where they have it all open all day and like they, they're ready for twenty thousand people and like you know four thousand show up so like we it's there's an abundance of vac- vaccinations yeah, no. here in st louis so it is very bizarre hey let me ask you this so like and i don't mean to be so morbid with all this stuff but this is the way it is right now and i kind of you know we wanted to pick your brain about all this shit so but you dealing with the alumni and people fucking going through, you know, the being an NHL player, and then all of a sudden it stops, and you're like, okay, now what? Well, I'm addicted to painkillers. Well, this, that, and the other. Has has the has it been really bad throughout the last couple of years with guys retiring, the alumni, some guys getting into different things, family problems. You know, you have to you have to gauge that uh, for years to come. But I mean, this couple past couple of years must have been pretty tough. Well, I I think you look at it this way. You've got we're weird animals, right? You, first off, you know, you'll never have a better job than what you're doing ever. Like find a better job and playing in the NHL. So that that's not going to happen. So it's all downhill. The minute you retire, right? The minute I send you a welcome to the alumni letter, that's a bad day. That, that, the, the only worst day was when the GM never called you to give you a job. Everybody retires, everybody. I don't care if it's Crosby. I don't care if it's David Backus, I, whoever you, you or myself or Cam, we all retire. How do we transition? I mean, that, that is the, the biggest challenge. And what do you do then if you're going to work for six years or seven years and live for 70 more? And that's your challenge, right? And finding that purpose and the reason every day when your feet hit the ground and you've got that drive and that purpose and the ability to say, I'm going to make a difference today, like we did when I'm going to make a difference in a shift or I'm going to make a difference you know what, I'm going to go fight Wade Belak because of the cavalry hit. Like, I'm doing that stuff, right? That's my purpose today. Like, we, that's the hard thing when players retire. What, what is that next wave? Because it'll never be as good as the first wave. And so, yeah, there, we're no different than society. You know, society's got issues. They've got coping mechanism issues. They have, uh, they have financial issues. They have uh, emotional issues, family issues. Uh, ours maybe are a little bit more complicated because in our sport, there's no out of bounds. And so we have players with concussion, uh, issues that maybe don't leave them functionally integrated in their world. And then the really obtuse ones, the world doesn't get functionally integrated with them and really no one wants to deal with them. So we're a little more complicated, but we're no different than anyone else, except our best job in our life begins at 19 and for some guys for an average career of 2.1 years ends at 22. I know, so man. Try to beat that. Wow. That's, that's so crazy. 2.1 years. Great breakdown. That's mm-hmm. like a great point average for some people. But oh, two, two, what are you looking at? 2.1. But you know what, uh, Glenn, you know what was interesting for me? Like, I went to college. You went to college. You obviously had a long NHL playing career, but – well, that, that's marginal. It was Western Michigan, so it was really high school. Well, I went to Northern Arizona, so yeah. that was kind of like the, sa- the well, same thing. about it every damn day to me, okay? <laughs> it's probably the same thing. But you know what was a, a big like uh, like shocker for me when I first started being around like NHL players and stuff like that is how many players came out of junior and never graduated high school. You know, so you just yeah. mentioned 2.1, and you got like this junior hockey system that 
has a lot of kids leave, graduate to professional hockey without even graduating high school. So, like, some of these guys who don't make a lot of money, like, everyone assumes everyone makes $50 million, $100 million, yeah, but it's not the case, is it, Glenn? No, in fact, if you look at the league today as it sits, the, you know, the average age of an NHL player is 23 and a half. So at, at 24, he's closer to becoming one of me than, than a current player. Right? He's, on, he's on the back nine of his career. So the, the way the financial system works in the league with the cap, you retire much, much sooner than I played till I was 40. There's no chance you're going to play till you're 40. They're going to find cheaper, younger talent. That's just the economic system that exists today. So they leave the game earlier, which means you're retired for a lot longer. And if you do the junior route, you know, they do have like a scholarship program in Canada where you can go to a Canadian university. But the minute you start playing professionally, that, that goes by awry. So yep. you don't take part in that. And, and so it does become a, a bit of a challenge. There, there's no doubt that, you know, the, the journey is great, uh, but, you know, and you don't think about that backside of your career. What am I going to do next? We just live and die by every shift. <laughs> Like, you know, I'm looking down the ice and there's Patrick Juan. I'm going, okay, I better not give up a goal because he's really good. And I'm not. Like, that's the way we live. Uh, you know, we live and die by every win, every save, every day. Um, but it does come to an end. And for most of the players, it comes to an end way sooner than what, what was in the 80s and the 90s. And then, you know, coming out of, you know, the cap world, it's just the, the harsh reality it's a young man's game, which is played at a high speed, and it's it's crash and burn way quicker than you know t- ten, fifteen years ago. That's just the harsh reality. That's what the numbers show, and uh, it, it it's real for these guys. And then figuring out uh, when that NHL train leaves the station, and you're not on it. Now what? Okay, so you typically feel isolated. Phone doesn't ring. No one's really calling you anymore to say, hey, you know, you're the toast of the town, right? You you can't really call and say, I'm Glenn Healy of the Maple Leafs. Get me into the Bruce Springsteen concert. Uh, Glenn who? No, you're not getting into the concert. No, sorry. And, you know, you lack structure because our days are all about structure. You know, 1030 practice, yep. you know, 12 o'clock meeting. You get your meal at 1230, power play at 4 o'clock, PK at 430. Uh, maybe you've got your uh, 620 you know, warm up 703 anthems, rinse and repeat, do it again. That structure's gone. Does that remind you COVID? Isolation, no structure. You know, you get the same sweatpants on three days in a row. <laughs> you know what? Uh, maybe time to put a suit on every once in a while, yeah. right? And and so what people are feeling today with COVID and, and why they don't feel uh, necessarily that mental wellness that, that you should feel because we are, isolated, no structure, and that's what NHL players feel when it's all said and done, and that NHL train leaves, and you're not on it. And then you say, now what? And that's what a lot of guys have to figure out. Change your clothes, Cam. That's well, what he's telling you to change dress all the clothes. fucking time to, to look normal. <laughs> but listen, so what are these guys, so like, what is the big thing that you could help a, a reti- so like, what's, I'm trying to think of a guy that played juniors, didn't get educated, he's not educated, and, and he didn't make enough money, but he's He's got bills. He's got a couple of kids, and all of a sudden it just stops. It's like you said. Like, what do you do to help him? Like, do people call you and they're like, "Hey, man, is there anything? Can you call?" Oh no, yeah, we we're set up in in the sense that there's 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 incredible amounts of, of programs that are available uh, through scale. We had a, a a program today at eleven o'clock where we had north of a hundred players on a phone call with their wives, and it was all about financial literacy. Mm. And it was an hour long call, just walking you through that, you know, let, let, let's say financial literacy is like a GPS. If I don't know where I am right now with my phone to punch in my coordinates, but I want to go to Cam's house, if I don't know where I am now, how the hell am I going to punch in where his address is to get there? So you have to know where you are financially so that, Hey, that burn rate stays at, you know, a steady stream so that, you know, when you get to 40 or 50, you're not looking back on, oh boy, I really burned through that, didn't I? So we had a call today with regards to that with a whole bunch of players. We also have, you know, probably close to 90 programs that are available. All you need is a coffee and a computer. We have a player speaking to player series where it's, you know, if you want to own a restaurant, we, we have five or six players that own restaurants and player to player, they'll speak to you about, 
you know, what it takes if, if you want to take that challenge on. Highly recommended, not in COVID, just saying, especially in Ontario, where they're all shut. Uh, but there, there is a, a tremendous amount of programs for, for players to figure out what the next steps are. And then, of course, you know, there's the, the biggest change that we've, we've come through is, is, you know, when I look at players that really fall off the trolley, we'll call that acute intervention. You know, if someone has a coping mechanism issue or, or you know, they're homeless and they, they really need help, we're good at taking care of that, right? We, we launched the Army to make sure the players helped out in his family. But what we've really uh, focused on has been the base of the, if every player's journey is a triangle, is, is the base of the triangle, the support group that's available for every player, a social worker, if you have an issue, he can uh, mitigate you through whatever issues you have, a, a group out of Ottawa, the Royal for mental wellness, a group out of Pittsburgh for mental wellness. So what we're doing is taking that triangle and, and yes, we're good at the top, the acute intervention, invert the triangle. Let's start taking care of the support so we don't get players to the top. And if we don't get players to the top, then we win. And that, that I think, has been the biggest change in, in what we've looked at from a philosophical standpoint, a change in how we look at that journey of the player. Invert the triangle, build up the support, build up the library of services that players deserve as players. Mm. And that, that's been my biggest focus, and that library of services that are available, it's enormous. Yeah. So there really isn't, isn't anything that you couldn't check off. Uh, a player calls me, I don't say I'm sorry. We have an answer. And we have a place for them to go uh, to to get a remedy for what they may you know deem critical. Because for some guys, their issues are critical, and we have to deal with them right away. Yeah, we get so yeah, many right. former players on, oh, and everybody's in a different yeah like reality. I mean, some people play <laughs> golf every day and made a shit ton of money. Some people have had chill. issues. We've had Kevin yeah. Stevens on, who really yeah, right. opened up. Sheldon Souray had some issues that he yeah. talked about, man, and he's back on track it's and has his stop. life together. So it's always interesting to hear. The Cam and Strick Podcast is brought to you by CarShield. You know, nothing more frustrating, Cam, than when that engine light comes on and you know right off the bat you're going to have to spend thousands oh. of dollars <gasps> to repair your vehicle. Call 800-857-2481. Mention the promo code CAM mm. or visit carshield.com and use the code CAM to save 10%. Yeah. That's carshield.com. A deductible may apply. Save yourself money. Cam. Sign up and get your coverage now Cam. with carshield.com. Cam. Now back to the Cam. interview. H- how did you um, b- become the head of the, of the alumni? And I, I've heard you say that it was fractured when you first took it over, Glenn. So how bad was it? What do you mean by that? Well, I think inverting that triangle and providing those library of services, I, I think we were more of a mom and pop shop that went around and played a bunch of alumni games, had a bunch of beers, told stories, and, and half of them were lies, and the other half didn't really happen anyway. Chasers were lies. Ch- all the I chasers exactly were lies. exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> so, so, but that, you know, that's not what players deserve. And, and my job's pretty easy. Like, it really is easy in the sense, all I, ha- all I have to do every day, and our staff, is we'll work for the players, number one, and number two, make tomorrow better than today. And if I can do that for every player and family, I win. And I, I think, you know, we, we had and saw players that, you know, died without getting a physical. Uh, we saw players that had financial issues. We saw players that uh, died without having a will, without taking care of their estate. Mm. Like those are things that are controllable, they're fixable, and it, what, what you needed to do is figure out what we were as a brand. And I, I figured out pretty quick what we were. It's the players. That's the brand. And I'll put my Wayne Gretzky and Mark Messe and Brett Hull and Mario Lemieux up against any current player any day long. And, uh, and it's the players that jumped in from Gretz first, because let's face it, if I'm going to do this job and I don't have baby Jesus in the manger come Christmas morning, I can't do this job. Right. And so we needed the big guys to step in and say, I want to make a difference. I want to take care of my brother. I have this this need and urge to protect and take care of one another, and I want to be part of it. And it was the players that dug in. It's not nothing to do with me. It's the players that said from '99 on that I'm going to make a difference, and that made the job hey difficult in some days, but way easier and way easier to make tomorrow better than today for a lot of players. And there, you're right. There may be guys I'll never have to help. And I might be one of them. I'll never have to help me. 
and that's okay. But I can tell you this, I, I certainly want to help someone I played with played against or, or know what it takes to make the NHL and the rigors and the toil and the trouble and just the, how hard it is to play a game that everybody would, you know, give up their left leg to play one shift, one game, one time, especially in this country, in Canada. And so, um, I'll full credit to the players. They're the ones that make it and they're the ones that have uh, decided that they're going to take care of their own. Is this I'll a, always help you out. Is like, this a full time so you know. job for you? I mean, like I know it is, but like I mean, are you like do you have? No, time? it's only seven days a week. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> like, Andy. Well, no, well, no, well, no let me. Ask, like, do you have time God. for yourself? Like, I mean, is this like? Are you taking on way more than you thought you were, or did you know what you were getting into? No, it's way more than I thought. I'm yeah. sure, right? <laughs> uh, you know, you start <laughs> peeling back the onion, and you're like another layer. It's yeah. another. Uh, but you know, we've got we got thirteen hundred European players too, right? That. Uh, you got 1,200 Americans and you got 1,300 euros and gosh, you Americans had a 60 year head start. I don't know what happened to you guys. You <laughs> fell off the wagon there. <laughs> oh, no uh, but you know, then, so you've got, again, you've got issues in, in uh, players in Europe and there's time changes and, and there's, you know, you know, there's different issues with European guys and North American players, but, um, but their, their problems are the same. Family problems are the same. Uh, but through, through COVID, it has been more difficult. We probably have more players that have had mental wellness issues, as society has, and we've had, you know, players that uh, that that need help at times when, you know, the, the world is not the same as it was last March when I was planning on the St. Patty's Day tour. And let me see how many bars can I get to before I have to get a taxi home. Oh. Uh, wow. <laughs> Shit's happened in a year, hasn't it? So, so it's a little bit more difficult. But it's yeah. I've got a, a phenomenal staff of people that work with me, and and again, the 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 great thing, the satisfaction is you don't pick up the phone and say, "I'm sorry, I can't help you." I, well, yeah, we can't we can't send you anywhere. We have nowhere for you to go. We we have an answer for all of that. And there's been an incredible relationship with the NHL and an incredible relationship with the NHLPA. And arguably for the first time in decades, the three of us have all kind of jumped in together to make a difference. And that that's really helpful because, you know, when you've got the power of the NHL and the power of the NHLPA and the power of the alumni all working together, uh, it, it makes for a, a pretty good band. We're missing one and we could become the Beatles. So, Cam, you're the Ooh. guy. Learn to play the drums and you're in. Yeah, I don't want to be him, so. though. No one cares about him. Is that Ringo? I don't want to be yeah, him. Yeah, Ringo. <laughs> no, hey, let me ask you this. So, let me ask you this. Okay, so you work your ass off. We all know that. You do great things. How do you chill, dude? How do you get your mind oh. right? Do you kick your feet up at the lake, doing your thing? And, and let me ask you a two part question. Sorry. So, these guys that maybe do have a little bit of money, they have a home, like, do you? You tell them, like, hey, try to relax. Look what you have. Like, some guys go through depression whether they have money or not. I mean, they, they just really do. Mental illness, is, it is what it is. So how do you cope? How, what do you tell these guys when they know they have a setup just to try to get their mind right? Well, I'm not the unwashed, so I'm not about to tell anybody anything other than if uh, I've got the Lord's given me two ears and one mouth, and I better use my fucking ears more than my mouth. So <laughs> I do a lot of listening. Uh for me to chill, I, I, you're probably never going to get another guest on that will tell you this. Uh, but for years and years, I've been a bagpiper. And so for me, Scottish family, that yeah. craft yeah. on playing the bagpipes is a real release for me. It's I went from one team in the NHL to a team of pipers that uh, that and drummers uh, that have competed at the world level. I, I've been on stage with Paul McCartney on a number of occasions playing Mulligan Tire. We've done Vimy Ridge for the 90th and 100th recommemoration, the D-Day beaches, Carnegie Hall in New York City. So that to me has been a, a real healthy release where, you know, if, it's hard to say publicly, but if I'm going to put my feet up and chill, give me some bagpipes and I go into my own little space in the world and I'm, I'm happy as can be. Uh, but yeah, hey, you do what everybody does. You know, you cherish your family times. And the obstacle of uh, COVID has been an opportunity because my kids are at the university age and I've had them home all year. And yeah. so these are treasured times I never would have had. Mm -hmm. They would have been at university doing what university kids do. 
which is, gosh, that brings just terrible Spend thoughts in my money. head what they would have done. Spend your money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Uh, they're going to get it when I go anyways. But uh, <laughs> the reality is it's been uh, it's been a real opportunity. But, yeah, I, I get my feet up. And we're a little bit different in Canada because we, we, we're, we're still working on getting our 15th person vaccinated. We've had a real hard time with vaccines Jesus. up here. So we're in full blown. Do you, 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 you uh, well, watch, you're a smart man. Like, leadership. How, how there we go. But, how do you dissect that? <laughs> Trudeau. Start with leadership, a complete Justine. epic failure. Yeah, it's been, it's been not very good for us. But, uh, you know, once that happens and vaccinations and needles and arms, like you guys have had in the States, it would be nice for you to send one of those one billion you have in reserve up to this country. I know. Uh, but once we get going, we'll get back opened up and we will be back on golf. We're not allowed even on a golf course, no. believe it or not. No, I uh, we'll get, I we'll get back to being the social animals that we are because as NHL players – we're social animals. Oh, you exactly. know, we like we like getting in a, amongst the crowd and yep. telling stories and signing Hang autographs and sharing sharing that journey that we had with the people that are like in your great state, our great country. I mean, it just we haven't had a chance to do that, but we will. Yeah, you, you, yeah it will come around. I didn't mean to like denounce it like that. It's just it's just completely different. But you're right. Do you wear a kilt? Cam wants to know. By the way, yeah, I how do your neighbors see about, you? <laughs> no, but you know what? Hey, the, you know, the, the instrument of the bagpipe, like there's, there's no other instrument that is played publicly more poorly. Like really? if you didn't know how to play a piano, you wouldn't invite people over and just start smacking away at the keys. Like my, like but my for whatever old. reason, <laughs> bagpipers that are really crappy have this, this need to pull them out and say, here we go, I'm going to play a song for you. And it's, uh, it, it's not even a, a recollection of music, but with pipes, once you get it and you become pretty good at it, it can be okay in the sense people all like it. And I can convince even the most ardent people that don't like the instrument that you probably could like some of the stuff uh, that, that you could play. Because you can play some tragically hip stuff, which is a great Canadian band. Oh, you can play yep. Hallelujah on the Pipes, which is another great Canadian uh, who, who who wrote that. So, yeah, there's lots of decent, you know, Dropkick Murphys. What about uh, Rush? Yeah, we could play a little Rush, <laughs> a little shipping up to Boston for Dropkick yeah. Murphys, like, yeah. for sure, you know? A little bit of a, you know, I could walk 500 miles. There's lots of stuff that we can play. Uh, but, no, the neighbors like me, and Cam, yes, there's about five kilts in my uh, in my basement. Yeah. <laughs> two of them um, two of them don't fit. Jeez, uh, <laughs> I, I can't believe I was that such a scrawny wee brawny boy back in the day only well pre-covid uh but they don't fit anymore but yeah i've got some that fit and we put the full garb on and it's uh but again it's outside of hockey it's led to some incredible journeys that i never would have been on Mm. to stand on stage at carnegie hall and play new york new york on the pipes for the first anniversary of 9-11 in a ranger sweater with the with the full pipe band Great memory. Going into Ground Zero was the last band uh, representing Canada. Powerful. That's... Doing Vimy Ridge, where Canada w- was put on the map uh, in World War One. You know, we turned the tide of, of that war. Yeah. And to, to be at Vimy, at the monument, and be the band that represents Canada, again, special moments. And then, hey, Paul McCartney, uh, the big joke was the only time I got to play at the Air Canada Centre, because Cujo was my goalie partner, was when I played for with Paul McCartney. <laughs> Pac, wow. Pac Wynn never started me at the Air Canada Center, so That's so crazy. good times for wow. sure. No, it's a cool instrument, and you're right. Not many people can say that they play that, and it can't be easy to learn and to master. So I think it's cool that you do. Plus, it's your heritage. You know, yeah, like dude. you're like the real yeah. thing. Like I love playing up. I, I love going up to Scotland. He, and playing, a, man. a real playing. Scottish uh, bagpipe player. Hey, before we get into your uh, TV career and your playing career, because we want, we got a lot of questions about that, but like. Real quick, as the head of the alumni, like when a guy like Dan Carcillo, for example, when he comes out very opinionated, very loud, calling people out, other former players, some other issues, like is that is that something you get involved in? Do you stay away from that when players are kind of voicing their opinion, promoting different things? And we and, had him on, by the way, and, and dealing like with everything <laughs> he was uh, kind of dealing with. Well, I would never talk about a player, right, yeah. Danny or anybody else, but. Uh, uh, the one thing I will say, um, I respect everybody's opinion. If you have one, I'll respect it and I'll listen. I have my own opinion and I, and I understand that we all want to 
finish strong. Like I, I, you typically, whenever we do a presentation to the teams and players, I've got one slide where you watch Usain Bolt crossing the finish line and there isn't a runner anywhere near him, right? hundred yard dash and there's no runners near you. Certainly that was me in high school, but it's because I was the last to cross the line, not the first. Okay. And that's what I want for every player to finish strong. And so how do we get there? And everyone can have an opinion and it might differ from mine, but I want everyone to succeed Mm -hmm. and I want that journey to be great. And if, and if Danny or Cam or anybody can, can give me insight to make things better, a better tomorrow than today, I'm going to listen. And he's had strong opinions and I respect them. And I've talked to him many, many times about them. We've talked about uh, psilocybos on a number of occasions and whether that could be something in the, in the arsenal to help players. And again, it's about respect. He played the game. He has opinions. I respect him. I'm listening. And uh, if he can make uh, things better for players, then I'm willing to, to jump on board with him. But yeah, yeah he's had strong opinions. Uh, hey, I had them on TV. Maybe that's why I'm not on anymore. <laughs> so, <laughs> Welcome to my world. Okay, just letting you know. We all do. Again, I'm not the unwashed. But that's oh, yeah. healthy, though. Isn't that healthy, though? Like, we, 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 we all want to have an opinion on things. And I, I do understand that, that microdosing and, and that side of it. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's tough to cope with some of these guys. They all went through different things. And, and Carcillo surely is, is very outspoken with, with that. But is there anything in particular that the NHL could do that you're kind of looking, you're sitting back and looking like, okay, this this kind of this needs to happen. Well, this needs to stop, and this needs to happen. Anything in particular that you could think of right now that they should change? Well, I think we, um, on a daily basis, work with the PA and the NHL to try to make things better. Right. So when you know you you look at uh, some of the rule changes that have happened in the game, you know, clearly fighting is way down. And they understand that that is not advantageous to later on in your life. So they tried to make some rule changes to do that. That's on them. That's not on the alumni. That's a PA and a league matter. But but they they do have that uh, that kind of uh, opinion that they they don't want to read about people in the paper. They don't want to read about somebody who's getting divorced. They don't want to read about someone who's living on the street. They they do care and do financially kick in dollars to make sure that we fix what, what could be some of our warts. And so every day we try to make things better so that that journey doesn't end up where you read it in the front page and you say, and I don't play the blame game. I, I, I don't, I, I play the help and hope game. And how can we make changes if we see that we have, we've got a systemic issue or a problem in our game. And, that, and that's, I think I'm looking more, you know, at 30,000 feet down the road and saying, How do we make a difference for the next wave of players? Hey, let's face it. There'll never be an out of bounds in the NHL. So concussions or functional integration, whatever you want to call them, will always be an issue. Mm. And so how, how can we help players that face those issues? And some of them face them because, hey, it could be a hockey fight. Some of them face them because it could be a a hockey play that goes wrong. And some of them face them like Andrew Shaw, who retired yesterday. Uh, just because um, at some point the, the, the you just can't play at the level you can play at, based on you know a bunch of hockey plays that went the wrong way, but but we're not ignoring these issues. We're facing them head on, and so uh, I, you know I, I can't do this without the NHL, without the NHLPA. I can't do it on my own. So I appreciate the help that that they give, but I do also understand that the NHLPA represents the current players. And the NHL represents the current state of the game and the, the 32 owners. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm not blind to that. And for, for me and for Cam is, is to make sure we take care of the 3,800 players that played the game with us and make sure that we have answers for them. Time to talk a little bit about Daredevil Hockey, oh! the ultimate in performance plus protection. Daredevil is a lightweight compression-based oh. layer designed with Kevlar cut-resistant oh. fabric overlays that protects all the vulnerable areas of the upper and lower body from skate lacerations. Get yours now, www.daredevilhockey.com. Use that promo code Cam and Strick. You'll save 25%. Now back to the interview. Let's go. Yeah, well, you were on TV for a long time, too. And listen, you had a prominent role with Hockey Night in Canada. And you were outspoken and yeah. opinionated. And, like, you know, people like me, like, I love yeah, that. I like it. people who have an opinion. You know, but how do you reflect on, on what you did on television? Did you enjoy it? Did it kind of fulfill maybe any emptiness left behind after not playing? Like, just to kind of get your hockey fixed? Like, fill me in on that. 
Well, I was 40 years old and, um, I still had two years left on my contract. So, uh, nice. the Leafs were, were clearly stupid to sign me. Like clearly <laughs> I was done at 34. I didn't want to tell anybody, right? <laughs> so just keep going. Here we go. Um, and it was my anniversary, June 30th. And, uh, it was a Saturday and a courier pulls up. So we all know what happens on the 30th of June on a Saturday when a courier pulls up. It's what they call a buyout. <laughs> They're getting rid of you. You don't get Saturday couriers. Come on. Yeah. Middle of the summer on buyout day, unless you're getting bought out. So it was bought out. Um, word hit the airwaves. Hockey Night Canada called me and said, would you be willing to, to take part? Sure. I'll give it a try. If I like it, wonderful. If I don't, I'm out. And so I remember, recall the first game I did with the great Don Whitman. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm up in the booth and I've got my headset off and I'm just taking it all in. This is just beautiful. Wow, the crowd is, is going crazy. And Don Whitman pushes the mute button on his, uh, his, his handheld and says, hey, stupid, put your can on. People can't hear you unless you have your headset on. Oh, oh gee, sorry. Okay. <laughs> so that was my introduction to Hockey Night in Canada. And then the very first whistle, and if you recall, they used to put up the lines, right? It, and it was Edmonton at the time, so, you know, you got Messier and Curry. And I got through about three names, and then, boom, puck drop, and, and off go the lines. And I said, well, unless you're a speed reader, uh, you wouldn't have read any of those names. But don't worry, if that wasted your time, wait till the next whistle. We're going to do it with the other team and waste more time. And from the <laughs> executive director called me right away, you can't say that. Well, I Ooh. did already. So, uh <laughs> But you know what? To get a chance to uh, to work with the people I got to work with, to do the Olympics, our last one I did was Sochi, to work with you know, to Bob Cole and to work with Don Cherry and to work with Don Whitman and to work with Jim uh, Houston and Craig Simpson and like you know that 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 staff of people that are the best in the oh, business, yeah. like oh. they are the best. To get a chance to do that and for us to be the first group to have. In between the bench, we were the first ones to go down to ice level. And for me to be part of that, I, I, you know, I, I look back on that and say, gosh, I was, I was blessed to get a chance to do that. And so I, I looked at it as a, you know, a, a, a real opportunity that, gosh, the kid from Pickering, Ontario, that grew up by a nuclear reactor, you think playing in the NHL is pretty good, but getting to do that on hockey night, mm-hmm. um, I, I'm pretty, pretty darn lucky. I and th- to do it with the people that I did it with, even even more spectacular. The best producers, the best technicians, the best directors, you know, it, it's simply the show of record. Yeah, I figured that that power plant would have, like, you know, get your hair falling out pretty good, but you still got a great healthy head of hair there, buddy. But I'll tell you this. Did anybody ever get pissy with you after, after a, you know, a long night where you're, you're, you're in kind of a weird mood, you – You've been working all damn day, and all of a sudden you just kind of like, okay, you, you rip a guy a little bit. Where you like afterwards, like, man, am I gonna get a tap on the shoulder from either somebody working here, walking in the locker room the next day, somebody giving that look? Like, I know what you said. Like, did, did that ever happen? And when it did, who did it? Not once, hmm. not once in all the years that I worked between the benches um, or work with Hockey Night in Canada or in the Olympics, there wasn't a single time that there was ever a a conversation with a player or a confrontation or a negotiation about anything. It was, uh, if it was said and it was wrong, then shame on me. And if it was said and it was right and the player disagreed and he's wrong, shame on him. So I, there, there was never that conversation. And uh, I, I think that your role between the benches or your role in the booth, it was a couple things. You got to, you know, the how and the why, how the play happened, why did it happen? And I think what we tried to do at Hockey Night Canada, we, we call it the ACE theory, which was it had to be authentic. We tried to be Canadian, and it had to be entertaining. Yep. So you had to have that mix of entertain the fans, educate the fans, uh, but be authentic, be real, and, and, and don't be that phony that people listen to and you, you sit back and we know who they are, mm-hmm. and you go, it's just full of shit. Um, that wasn't the case. And we didn't try to be that way with Hockey Night in Canada. Uh, in fact, uh, we had, in many cases, we would show up at a Stanley Cup final game, and we, we have 26 cameras. It, you're not getting away with anything. Yeah, and I think at the end, players started to realize. I mean, we would put, I, I recall one game we did in Toronto, Andrew shot, so right behind the bench in Toronto, 
there's two seats. I don't know why you would ever buy those seats because all you see is my fat ass all game. Okay. <laughs> and, I like and, and Andrew Shaw's parents were, were in those two seats oh my God. and they're lovely people, right? They've got the, the yeah. sweaters on and the name on the back and, and the, the dad, you know, he's, this is, yeah, you, you can't get better other than being on the bench, can't get a better seat. And so we, we actually took a designated camera and put it on him the whole game. And every time he got a beer, we would film it. And at the end of the night, <laughs> we rang the bell like it was a 10-round a fight. Ding, another one. Ding, another oh, beer. Another great. beer. Uh, I mean, we would put cameras on mums that were in the crowd. I think we did that with Braden Holpe one time in a playoff game in Washington. Just the ability when you've got 26 camp, you don't miss much of anything. And at ice level, you're certainly not missing much. So uh, I think players recognize pretty quick. If hockey night's in town then this is not the two camera shot dog and pony show. And, you know, you can pretty much do what you want to do. You're, you're in for a full show. And, and I'm proud of the fact that our guys could deliver it. Damn right. Hey, listen, how heated would it get? Cause I mean, like you and Mike Milbury it kind of felt uncomfortable at times, him and other people too. Yeah. Like you would say some things to like Elliot Friedman, whatever, like whenever that many people are giving their opinion in a round table environment and you've got, a bunch of guys who are former players and whatever, like, did it ever really cross the line? Were you, were you serious? Did it ever, did you ever walk out of a segment being pissed off? Uh, never walked out of a segment pissed off. Uh, I, you know, Hey, you got to remember we had panels at one point years back. It was Brian Burke, Mike Milbury and myself. Oh, wow. Okay. Now there's, <laughs> there, there's your <laughs> alpha panel. Yeah. Where's that? Film uh, at, baby? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I think at one point, um, Mike Milbury did throw a, a media guide and hit me in the head on TV. Um, so is there HR that I can call? I know I might be time barred, but that Ooh. probably. I gave you a copy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Those um, are thick as hell. <laughs> uh, I, I think we had one during the lockout there. there was, and those all was created heated moments, right? I'm mm-hmm. a player's guy, was very much pro player. And, you know, other people that had worked in management, not so much pro player. So there was a lot of, that's where the angst, really happened but the actual play and talking about you know plays on the ice and players and expectations of teams and gms and coaches that there really wasn't anything heated where we left there and and did anything but go get a a beer as fast as we could and i've never seen anyone change get out of their suit and get a beer in their hand quicker than mike so the the race was on but uh we are great friends and same with berkey so all those years on tv same with elliot you know, we might have had disagreements about certain situations, and and Elliot has spoken up at at times about them. But yeah, there's never any bad blood, and uh, and I, you know, for the most part, I I enjoyed working with a talented group of people. But nothing that you would uh, you know walk on the other side of the street for, like the days of the original six, where they wouldn't even sit in the same uh, train car together. That's not. I want to kill Andy us. every goddamn day. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> but hey, who's the best in your opinion? Who was the best? Who is the best? Who's who's the best going right now? Well, the best that I work with, the the two that stand out. Well, I, I mean, there's three from a play by play standpoint. Bob Cole is clearly, you know, all the calls that Bob made when you when you think about. Uh, and we all—I I don't know if you guys have been around him much, but we all copy his voice, right? You know, and there's times you get busted. He, Bob's close to you, and he'll look at you and he'll say, "Are you doing me?" <laughs> yeah, Bob, I am copying you. Yeah, I'm sorry, <laughs> but those calls, you know, when when the Flyers played the Russians, and you know, he said, "They're going home. They're going home." Like no one makes that call, or. You know, I recall in the Olympics in Nagano, and and he said there will be five minutes of you-know-what, which would be the last five minutes of the game, and then five minutes of you-know-what, which would be overtime, and then you-know-what, which is the shootout. Who comes up with that, right? <laughs> like most people just regurgitate the crap that's going to happen, and uh, we, yeah, we know shootout, blah, blah, blah. But no. Robert had a call in every one of the decades from the Joe Sackick when he made that the baritone saying that out. He just it was just a, a pleasure to listen to, and and honestly, one of the last games I I did with him, uh, you know, it was, it was one of the last games that he did do. We were in the Montreal Forum, and it was about seven minutes left to go in the game, and I just said, 
take it home, Bob. It's all yours. I'm out. And he finished the game off like he was painting a Picasso. It's just a, a thing of beauty. So Robert was great. Don Whitman, one of the cheapest men I've ever met. He would try to use um, uh, uh, upgrade passes from 15 uh, years that were expired. Yeah, he was yeah. beautiful. He would be arguing at the gate. I didn't know this was expired. <laughs> it expired in 1972, Don. Um, and Jim Hewson, who now is Hockey Night's top guy, and, yeah. and, and Chris Cuthbert. So, so many great people that you work with. And guys that you don't hear names of, uh, you're John Shannon's. Shirelli Najak, the most talented producer on the planet. He makes it all happen. He's got the most demented, skewed mind and perfect for me. So we work magic together. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, you, and grapes is grapes, right? He, he was every week. You just tune in on that first intermission and, and uh, do the sign of the cross and say the Hail Marys and hope. Hopefully you got to be into hockey though, Glenn. Like I'm from Eureka, Missouri and we'd get rock 'em sock 'em tapes. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? Oh, yeah. And we just watch it and he'd just be so funny and clever and loud. And I'm like, wow, this is really cool. Yeah. So, I mean, God. giving person in every way, like yep. from the armed forces to uh, the police oh, yeah. to, you know, I've, I've made many a call to grapes to call players that are down and out. And he calls them immediately. He's just a, he's a wonderful soul. Mm. So, so yeah, that's I mean I hate that's not a bad star-studded cast to work with. No, so, I mean all. anybody can make me look good if you're looking at that as your as your headliner. So I'm okay. Yeah, and we had we had grapes on with us too. He yeah. was he was unbelievable. Love all right, but TNT. Okay, now they're coming into the fold here with the NHL. I don't know if you saw the uh, the Instagram or the Twitter post they had <laughs> to promote like them now coming into the league, and they showed like the two most prominent players. In the NHL, they had Alexander Ovechkin, then they had uh, Andrew Ference. <laughs> I think they thought that was Connor McDavid. They just found a captain of the oh Edmonton Oilers, and it was Andrew Ference, not Connor McDavid. So uh, that wasn't a great start. Fun. But handsome listen, butter. they they are so good with their studio stuff on the NBA. Do you feel like the NHL could take a lesson from what other sports do, maybe be a little bit looser in the studio? And, and do you feel like maybe we're headed in that direction with some new media partners, at least down here? Well, I think what they're going to do really well is, uh, and this is what is what I love with what you guys are doing. You, you tell stories about the game and about players. And I think with their HBO connection, their CNN connection, and and Turner, what, what that they want to create, I think they want to tell some of these stories of the players and stories of the game and stories of alumni that have built the game, stories of alumni that have paved the roads for these current guys, Andrew Ferentz or Connor McDavid or one, one or the other, just want somebody um, to, to, the, for these guys to drive on those roads. We paved them, they're driving on them. And so, you know, sometimes that change, that change of direction philosophy might be good. Uh, you know, the one thing I'll say, uh, we are long past the days of verses when I, I don't even know who watched, and certainly I missed ESPN when they disappeared. I used to love, you know, that whole that whole show, Thirty and Thirty, that pr- project that they've worked on. It's riveting to me again, yeah. telling the stories, and so I'm hoping that's what the new broadcast partners will do. I don't care about matchups. I don't care about good sticks in the lane. I don't care what the coach is going to do. Yeah. He doesn't play. The less I see of him, the better. Uh, <laughs> I had my Keenan, so that's why I say that publicly. Oh, we had him um, too. <laughs> yeah, but um, you, yeah, you know that that I hope um, that that they bring new fans in because we all have a story. And Cam, I don't know your story, but I bet you it's a damn good one. Mm. And and my story, I mean, I told a little bit of it today, but there's more to it. And I think every one of these players has a story, and and it mm-hmm. should be told. And I hope these broadcast partners uh, jump on board and, and do exactly that and do it with fresh voices and do it in a new way that, you know, when it comes, you're right, when it comes to basketball and some of these other broadcasts, it's must-see TV in some ways. And um, for some of our hockey broadcasts in the past, it's not been the show of record. It's been the show of non-record. And I hope that changes with, with the new partners. Wow. Yeah. No, I, I hear you. Sticks every, in the lane. Every, Cam likes sticks hey, in the lane. That's what he this likes stick to stick in the lane down for. No, just inter- entertain me. And <laughs> it, it, that, please. And you have to break the game down, too, because you're trying to get new people. There's always new fans in hockey, and everybody realizes that. And there's so much going on that it confuses people, mm-hmm. and it's hard to get into. But, again, when, you're, when you come from a non-hockey market, like Andy and I kind of both did, 
You you know what got us going is Brett Hall's flashy hair, scoring loud. He's on McDonald's things. He was he was loud in the media, and we're like, what is what is this guy? Like, oh my god, okay, I love I love the blues before I love the sport of hockey because of how loud Brett Hall was. And you know, I, I don't know. I just I think there's something to that, and I think the NHL could these. Okay, let me give one. They gotta I make know, hockey cool. They like gotta the make hockey sports. cool again. Like Connor McDavid scores three goddamn goals the other day. Like I mean, lightning fast. That's, and at the end of the game, he's just sitting there. I know he's miserable. He's got he's got to do COVID stuff. This, that, and the other. And I get it, but he doesn't even smile. And it's just like I don't know, man. There's just got to be something to it. So if he's not going to do it, somebody else has to. There has to be that loud point. I know I'm rambling, but sorry, Glenn, with two ends. That's okay. <laughs> well, I mean, that's what we love about Ovechkin. The way he plays yes. on the ice yep. Yep. is the way he is off the ice. Like there's there's no. There's no second gear in his car. <laughs> no steam ahead. Here we go. No. Whether it's physically, the way he shoots the puck, the way he, the, the, his flair when he went to the Olympics and basically told everybody, I'm not coming back till they're over. Like, that's why you love him as a player. That's why he is a breath of fresh air. And, and that's why the NHL, and in some ways, I think should and will and wants to promote these players in a different light than maybe they were promoted. When it seemed to me when it was NBC, all we were looking at, it was, it was the Kentucky Derby coming up. And so they're going to do a promo on the Kentucky Derby for the hockey game. Well, uh, I don't know. The game seems to be, in my mind, should be more important than some of the other things that we're promoting. So, but that that's in the past, and they've got a new partner. Um, I hope that they reach out to the hockey world and and grab some of the best people, the people I talked about that work with Hockey Night, so that they hit the ground running and they don't make the Andrew Ferrans mistake again. Yeah. Um, and yeah. if that person is still working for them, probably shouldn't be. Just saying, um, it's not <laughs> a mistake you want to make. <laughs> He's the exact. Executive yeah. producer. <laughs> yeah. Time to talk about our boy Dan Bellman. Bellman.com. That's with two N's, not one. B E H L M A N N dot com. Hey, check out the new inventory. Check out the pre owned vehicles. You looking for a Chrysler, a Dodge, a Jeep, a Ram? How about a Cadillac or a Buick GMC? All in Troy, Missouri. Get your new wheels in time for the winter. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now back to the interview. Good. So, all right, listen, you said you had a great story, and you really do, man. Yeah. I mean, your, your playing career, I mean, I know you kind of poke fun at it, but listen, you played with some unbelievable oh, players. Lord. I was watching your highlights today of, like, when you're in a Kings uniform. I don't remember you playing for the Kings. I'm like, you just, Two pads. you yeah. own the Oilers, Glenn. I mean, do you ever go back and watch your own highlights just when you're bored? Just just put that one on. If you're ever feeling down about yourself, put that <laughs> highlight package on of you playing against the Oilers back in the 80s. You know, I'll be honest, I, I retired, um, shot my hockey bag, picked it up. Scott McKay was the trainer with the Leafs with Brian Papineau. And, and I put it in my car, and I put it in the basement, and I haven't opened it since I retired. <laughs> so really? I can actually see it in the basement. It's still in the same spot. I, I don't even know what's in it. I, I actually should look in it, because I, I bet there's some, some, some pranks and jokes that were put in there uh, for when I did open it, but just it. It's been that long. Not really. I mean, hey, the, you look back at, at, you know, that game, those the way we played then. You know, my first year in the NHL, I had the brown pads. They were actually made by John Brown, but they were brown colored. <laughs> they were about 24 pounds uh, for the pair. And so goalies had to be smaller because you had to get east to west. Like Grant Fuhrer, Mike Vernon, like all of us yeah. were kind of – yeah, Darren Pang, well, Panger was, he, he set it to a new level. Uh, but, you know, the pads were heavy, so you had to be able to be agile and quick. And the goalie who was six seven, well, how the hell is he going to get east to west? There's no chance. Then the equipment changed and the pads became lighter. And then now, if you're not six foot four, they don't even draft you as a goalie. So that whole game changed. I, I think I stood up for the national anthem. And then the rest of the game, I was rolling around on my back trying to make those two pad stack saves. But, you know, really, you look back, every once in a while, a highlight will come up. And even my kids will be like, that's you? Like, it's hard for them to differentiate between dad and a goalie. Uh, and and honestly, we typically every year do a video uh, for all the NHL alumni. Uh, we've got one of the most talented guys, Timmy Thompson, up here, who puts it together for us. And it's just, you know, proud to show that legacy. It's It's basically our business card. And um, so I've been doing it for four years now, and they're just, you know, the – player after player, generation after generation. And I thought the other day, I have yet to make one of those damn videos. Like four years, and I have not even in one of them. So i got to have a talk with Timmy. But uh, not often do I uh, watch. And, and really, uh, 
I, I think seven years out of retirement, someone asked me to come back and, and take part in coaching. And I thought to myself, I don't even know if I could coach these guys because mm. they play such a different style. I, it's too much. What would I tell them? Well, it's Stop too, the much, puck? too much travel, too much. Every, it, it, let me ask you this. So I, I want to get I, I a couple more for you. Now we're going to, we're going to let you go. You've been great by the way, but like, isn't it nice? So, and Andy and I both have done this before. Is all these like new fantasy camps where you get invited to go up to Winnipeg or you go to Nashville, or you do this, and you just see all the other alumni that you played against or you watch played older guys, younger guys, guys that play, and you just all mingle and you raise money and like that is such a cool, fun thing. It's it's unbelievable. Just everybody reconnected. Not to mention the fans are there and they could kind of reconnect with you too. And ever it goes to charity. I mean. That in itself, that kind of circuit that goes on, I know COVID kind of screwed everything up, but you could, I know you don't play anymore, but you've been a part of some of those things. So, damn, they're fun. Yeah, and, you know, it, it goes even beyond fun. I mean, we we're, we uh, we take part and run seven of the, those fantasy camps. We've got the Gordy Howe Cares in Edmonton and Calgary, yeah. and you've, you've got one in Vancouver. We've got the Baycrest uh, Tournament that is in, um, in Toronto, um, that one is for Alzheimer's. Gordy Howe Care is for Alzheimer's. And uh, one out of Boston, which is raising money for uh, finding a marker for uh, CTE, the cystal protein, the sludge that's in the brain that creates Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. And, you know, with COVID, what has, has happened here, like forget the fun that we have when we sit down and, we, again, tell stories that never happened, but we're just lying. But that's okay. No one ever has a fact check on you. We don't, we don't have CNN, so there's no fact check. Uh, but, you know, th- those are good times. But what is really missed is all of the money that the players have generated for these philanthropic causes, like literally $14 million in, in Alberta, just on the Gordie Howe Cares Foundation in a year for a bunch of guys to get together and play hockey and have a bunch of beers. You know, the Baycrest Tournament in Toronto, $8 million. And what that means is that there was $8 million less dollars in the bank in Toronto for research for Alzheimer's. Yep. And 14 million less in Alberta, and less money in Boston, where they're now working with um, animals to to find a way to find a marker to get rid of that cystal protein. All that money isn't there this year, and and that, you know, as players, what we don't realize: yes, we're having a good weekend. Yes, full of fun and frolic, and oh gosh, it's good to get back together with the guys. And what are we doing? Playing a sport. But really, what we're doing is raising so much money to make a difference in society. And unfortunately, that didn't happen this year. But it's going to happen. Uh, we're getting back on the, on the track here. And we're going to get back to raising money and making a difference in society. And that, that's the biggest thing for NHL players that I love. We're better than any other sport. But I think we leave the game as ambassadors. You know, yeah, we're talented. Yes, we score a bunch of goals or, or we make a bunch of saves. But uh, there are people that we would love to have marry our daughters because they're great ambassadors. And that's what NHL players are. They give way more than they get. And uh, those pro-ams are a great example. All right, listen, you want your daughter to marry a hockey player, Andy? <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask yeah. you about uh, Mike Heenan, who we had on. Yeah. But, I mean, you get Tony Amane, who just absolutely oh. puts him on blast. Yeah, Pronger, Brett Hall. Then all of a sudden you get like an Eddie Belfour who says something nice about him. Yes. Or even like Shane Corson said something nice about him. A couple guys. Like, what was your experience? I mean, you guys won a Stanley Cup, so does that make it a little easier to look back on him, or was he really difficult no, I, for you to deal with? I, you know, uh, I my first interaction with Mike was back when I was playing Junior B in Pickering, and he was coaching the Peterborough Peets. And Mike, at the time, uh, wanted me to go play with Peterborough, the Junior A team. And if I had done that, I would have given up my chance of getting a scholarship. And and my family wanted me to be the first Healy educated because there wasn't one anywhere in the family. <laughs> you can go back hundreds of years. None of them educated. So really? I was going to go to university. And so he asked me to go play. And, and I told him, no, I said, I'm going to stay and get a scholarship. And at that point, as a young kid, I was only 16 or 17, basically called me out, <laughs> said I was a loser. I'd never go anywhere. I'd never make anything of myself. And he walked out. Okay, that's hard to take as a 16 or 17 year old because I don't know what my future is going to be. Well, I made the NHL. He wasn't in it yet. So I couldn't wait. And if you remember the old LA Kings forum, the visiting team had to walk by you to get to their locker room. I couldn't wait for that Philadelphia Flyer coach to walk by me. And I told him, wow, congratulations. You finally made it, eh? Wow. And I don't even know if he remembered the conversation we had in Pickering, but I certainly did. Yeah, he did. But Mike was one of those guys, he, he pu- would push everyone to a limit. And unless you push back, he just kept going. And 
I, I was a guy who I had a very short limit and so wasn't putting up with a lot of his stuff. And so, you know, I recall one game I played, had a shutout. Media asked me if I was going to play the next game. And I said, I don't, I can't figure this guy out. I mean, if it was Al Arbor, I would know. But with him, I can't figure him out. And the headline, and you know the guy who writes the story doesn't write the headline. The headline was, Keenan, no Al Arbor. Healy. Oh. So you can imagine uh, that morning skate wasn't very, very, very nice. And he asked me no- a number of times the difference between him and Al Arbor. And in fact, called me Mr. Hockey and Mr. Know-it-all and a whole bunch of other names. And I basically got tired of it and told him, I don't know, six Stanley Cups. How about that? That uh, was it. We we definitely we broke up after that. It was wow. over. There was there was no there was no first dance, no first kiss. They were we're done. And uh, but I, again, I had set a limit, and to this day we get along great. We have great a great relationship, and and truly, Mike, if there's a player in need, he calls me and wants to get that player help. So I don't have a negative word to say. Uh, I just understand we both had roles and we both had a job to do, and um, I'm glad I got to lift 35 pounds over my head that one year in New York and he was a part of it. So uh, that would be as, um, that would, that would be about as positive as I could say. He was a part of it. He pushed everyone to their limits. Mike Richter never had a better year. Brian Leach never had a better year. Uh, but uh, I can tell you when we were all said and done, uh, we all needed some help. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I've heard, I've heard, heard that from so many people though. Like there's only two coaches that, that when we have guests that come on that have that strong of opinion about like the other one is Mike Babcock. And like, mm-hmm. just you, you've always had an opinion. Like, what are your thoughts of him? Like, do you want to see him come back into the NHL? Like, do you think the NHL is better off without these guys in it or with them in it? Well, strategies change, right? Players are different. We have kids. Our kids are different uh, than, than when I was a kid. And you have to adapt. You know, if you, if we might have been great parents when our kids were four. If we want to treat them that way when they're 14, we're probably not going to have a pretty good relationship with our kids. Mm-hmm. They're 14 now. We have to change. And the map has changed for players, current players today. Uh, they, they aren't like where, you know, we could be told that you're going to wear your equipment back from a game on the bus because you lost. Or, you know, you can't say hi to your your parents. Or, I mean, you've got to go back to the days of, like, we had no arbitration rights. We had no free agency rights. If they wanted to send you to Wuhan, they could send you to Wuhan. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's not the way it is today. Good eating over there. <laughs> a gentler, kinder NHL, and you have to respond to players and get the best out of them. And it's not the same as kicking someone in the back or bag skating players or making them wear their equipment on the bus or shaming them into uh, doing something that they don't want to do. That The game has changed, and it's a – softer gentler nhl and uh that's just the harsh reality and for someone like mike maybe that's not the best world for him to be in and uh but he was great in the world he was in and his numbers dictate it yeah that wuhan doesn't sound very tasty right now (laughs) Uh, talk about mess real quick i I mean he's on a different level i mean obviously he did so much before he went to New York, but when he would, would he take the guys out? And when he walked around, it's like, okay, let mess walk in first, let him get organized. Let him talk to the, the owner. Everybody else sits down. Like how much did he run the show? And was it, was it fun to be around? Uh, the best leader in any sport and um, just a presence that was incredible. Didn't speak a whole lot, but boy, when he did, uh, you listened and, you know, we did have times in New York in 94 where we had mutinies. We had them. We did have times when players were totally out of sorts and mess was the guy to guide the ship. And we did have times when it was Mike and mess in the locker room in the coach's office. And we skated around in circles for 40 minutes waiting for one or two of them to come on the ice. And they never did. And things got sorted because of Mark. And, uh, you know, Mark was, was great in the sense that when he did say, we're going out for a team drink, you went out for a team drink. Yeah. There was no, I, well, I'm going to spo- meet, meet my, no, you went out. And, uh, and, you know, I, I recall one game, if you remember when Mike Medano fell off the stretcher, Oh yeah, oh, they put him on a stretcher. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, they show it highlight after highlight. And yep. that whole play began in the corner at the end of the second where, Ludwig and Hatcher were laying a beating on Mark and we jumped in 
It was Adam Graves and Pat Verbeek and a bunch of players jumped in. We ended up getting the short end of the deal with penalties. And Mark's message between the periods was, I can take care of myself. If you want to do something to make a difference in the game, you want to scatter the sheep, you go after the shepherd. Oh, okay. It wasn't 20 seconds into the third period. Whistle blows. You look back and Mike Medano is unconscious oh. at the blue line. Oh my God. How did that happen? Mark, that's how it happened. Yeah. You want to scatter the sheep? You go after the shepherd. Done yeah. deal. We had Moto. So uh, the- it was uh, yeah. Yeah, probably wouldn't uh, make it through a full season. Um, the, the, clearly, the Battle of Alberta, there would be suspensions every game. Uh, but, uh, but boy, he was uh, simply the best. And everybody mattered. I don't care if you picked up a towel or you were the guy who drove the bus or you played one shift. Trainer. Everybody mattered. Yep. And that uh, trainer too. Mm-hmm. Darren Langdon got called up from Deer Lake, Newfoundland for his first game and didn't even have anything but a backpack. Mark bought him a suit oh. in Montreal, hung it in his stall, and it said, From the boys, welcome to the show. Wow. We Langer. didn't chip in. He bought it, and Langer scored that night against Patrick Waugh. Wow. Like, that's the type of stuff, the legend, the, you know, the Benny Patrizzi who worked picking up towels in New York. Mark made sure he got a Stanley Cup ring because he had been around since 1942 after he was wounded in the war yeah. and never saw a championship. Wow. Mark wow. made sure he got a ring. So that's that. That's the lessons that he taught us as players. Dang, it was Darren Lane scored that game, and he had like 15 beer afterwards too, by the way. <laughs> Good old well, boy. 12 of them were in the third period on the bench. So he was <laughs> – He's fucking awesome. Hey, hey last thing for me. Uh, you're one of the first, maybe the only, I don't know, alumni association that has really like publicly said that you're like looking into cannabis and how yeah. that can treat head injuries and concussions and all that. Like, where's that at? And and who who was who was the one like behind the scenes that really helped you look look at it and and get you to really start moving on it? Well, I knew we had an issue because I knew we had an opioid issue, and I knew that the answer was not Percocets and oxycodone and Vicodin. And I knew the answer is not, if you can't sleep, just take Ambien. That, that's not the answer. There has to be a better answer. And uh, Canopy, one of the largest CBD companies in the world, uh, at the time Bruce was their top dog. And, and I met him uh, with a big group in, in Smith Falls, which is where Canopy is. And we were talking, again, not about concussions so much as just getting guys back functionally integrated to their world. So if you are on four oxys a day, can I get you to two? And maybe then you get 50% more of your day back with your family. And when I met Bruce, he, he looked at me and he said, Glenn, lose your stupid effing PowerPoint. I want to know how much money you need. And I want to know when we're starting. And don't tell me next week because there's seven days in the week. And how are we going to make this happen? And so through our chief medical officer, who's a, one of the world's leading neurosurgeons, uh, we embarked on that process of trying to find you know, help and hold for players beyond your traditional big pharma stuff. And so that process and finding the science behind it is still ongoing. Uh, we're not done with, with the, the research component to that. Uh, but, yeah, we were the first sport in. And if I can – and I know the answer. I, I don't have to have a medical degree to tell you that there has to be a better way. than um, and, and I had my hip replaced, you know, a year and a half ago. That's what goalies do, I guess, when they get older. And uh, the first thing the doctor did was give me 90 Percocets. Oh. So, you know, you put 90 Percocets and white wine together, that's oh. probably not going to make for a very good last With chapter no of your book. With no food? Too? So oh. there's a better way. And if we can find that uh, through a, a, a medicine like uh, medicinal CBD, then get me the science, which we're working on now, and uh, I am all in. I'm all in on getting players back functionally integrated to their world and back with their families. Damn right, man. You've been great. Good Thanks. stuff, man. Glenn, you're the best. Thanks, guys. Thanks, yeah. Man. Yeah, this a lot of fun. Um, yeah, you guys have a future. You guys should do a show. <laughs> well, we do. We, we do radio hey, every hey, day. We do. God damn hey. I'm too busy now. Actually, I want to chill out no more. Call, call TNT. <laughs> yeah, right. I should do that, <laughs> okay. I'll get you on. Okay. Hey. I know those guys on Spit and Chicklets. Maybe we can get us all on to that show. No, so. Hey, hey we've, right. had, we've had them on. I've already we, been on three times. We, we get along with those guys really well, actually. No. So. Yeah, well, I'll, 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 honestly, I applaud you guys in the sense that you know, you're, you're telling stories of players and, and that journey, and we need more of you is what we need. Appreciate and so that. I applaud you. It's All great. Right, thank you.
Appreciate it. Uh, it's been it, a man. pleasure. Go enjoy yourself. Great stuff. Yeah, go, See play, you go, right. go bagpipe. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Cheers, boys. See you. All, right. All right. Bye now. All right, that was Glenn Healy, and I appreciate him joining us here on the Cam and Strick Podcast. Man, very smart guy. Yeah, he's a smart ass like, too, man. Uh, he is. He'll fucking bash his he shit. He was very quick, very witty. Very witty. He doesn't mess around. All the guys look up to him too. Like, they're, what do you think about having him being in charge of the alumni? Fuck yes, yes, dude. Because he'll go toe to toe, dude. I've seen him in meetings with all the guys. Really? Oh yeah, at the MSC club and all. Very confident. Shit. He's ve- he walks in in front of all the Hall of Famers, yep. and he walks in and he fucking starts chirping, and he's like, "This is what we're doing." Like, he, and everybody's just like, "Oh yeah, yeah." Like he's he's very respectable. Everybody mm-hmm. loves him, mm-hmm. and. Uh, He'll fucking bash you. Dude. I got to be honest, though, like from afar, you know, and just uh, you know, watching hockey and, you know, during sports night when he was doing the hockey night in Canada, uh, like, like I understood why some of the guys are no longer there. I didn't understand why they parted away with, with him. Dude, like that made no sense. Because he's probably too controversial. They're so soft. Is he? What do you mean? Dude, he'll fucking call guys out. He like, would. I love that. Yeah. And that's what, that's what you the, need some of that. Dude, the NHL. Oh, my God. Like, I love Kevin BX the other day, by the way. What are you saying? He had that red coat on. He look, man. He's, I didn't hear he's what he really said. Good. It was uh, the sound he's, was down. He's really good. So what he said? Well, he countered old girl who's like, if you have your family watching hockey and you see the rough stuff, you don't want your kids get into it. I'm like, oh, who said that? The girl. What's her name? What's her name? Haley hockey- Wickenheiser. Is it Haley? I don't think so. Is that Haley on Hockey Nine Canada? <laughs> I'm thinking we're from St. Louis. Is it so Cammy Granado? Um, no, I know who you're talking about. I'm trying. I, can't to I thought it was Haley. This. So she comes out and says, and then fucking BX is like, no, here's the deal. That mm-hmm. shouldn't have been a suspension. We did it. Oh, he you, said that. Oh, yeah. Good for him. Really good. Because I'm getting crushed, too, because I, yeah, listen, I'm here's whatever. what I said about uh, Tom Wilson. I mean, like. He's like, going to get dinged for 30 games. Somebody, uh, I'm not going to say who it was, because a very uh, uh, well-known hockey figure said he may have saved hockey again this year, like, just in terms of, like, doing what just he like does. Something. He gets everybody talking about hockey. Know, man. Everybody tunes in and watches. He's that guy that you want to buy a ticket when he's playing because of the. Hey, un- Rangers He's fans. unpredictable. You're so, you hate Tom so much. Loved Sean Avery for some reason. Isn't that weird how that do works? They, do they? Yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah. They loved him. And Ty Domi. And Domi. Get out of here. I know. Sorry, man. Tom's Tom. Messier. Dude. And Tom, like. Messier used to run guys too, man. Fucking elbow guy. Like, he was. Yeah. He did Moto. Yeah. And Cass Bright is play there too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. My first game ever, Cass Bright rocked me. It's nasty. No. I mean, fucking Jeff A. Jeff Bookaboom. Bookaboom will fucking knee the fuck out of you. Come on now. So, look. Tom's Tom. I didn't like it. I love Panarin so much, but we don't need violence. Like, that's what separates okay, but hockey he, uh, so much. Of all the things we've seen that are violent in the uh, history of the game, was that, that one was of the most not violent really, things that we've seen? Dude, don't fucking... Let me tell you a true you story. Back, I'm throwing true you down. story. We're sitting in our studio that night, and one of the guys I work with said, hey, did you see what Tom Wilson did tonight? It's like making the rounds. It's all over Twitter. This is like while the Blues game's going on, so we're not on... And... Um, he shows me the video, and I'm just kind of like, yeah, what, what's what the big deal? Okay, so we threw him down. I actually thought that the play before that, when he was, like, grabbing uh, Buznevich, I thought maybe Who that was... the goalie. I thought that was, like, the bigger Well, that's issue. how he got fined. He got fined because got of fined the punch in the back of the shoulder. Yeah, okay. Yeah, not because of the throwdown. Okay, so that makes, he, and that makes even more sense. Because what their re- rebuttal is that every this happens 15 times a game, mm-hmm. and you throw each other down after a whistle. It's still part of hockey. You want to know what's interesting is when these agents and these players go into these hearings, you know what an agent told me the other day? I, I think I knew this, but I forgot. The agent, when he's representing the player in these hearings, so like a Patty Maroon has a hearing, or... Uznevich has a hearing because I think he got a stick up on Mantha, right? Funny how that works. Okay, so he you got a dirty sti- prick. He got a, he got a stick up on Mantha. The agent can only speak to the character of the player. Cannot refer to the incident. Exactly. Can't talk about. Andy, the, I've been through this firsthand. I know. So can't talk about the incident. Can't say what led up to the incident. Nope. Can't speak about what maybe what they're missing in terms of when they when they when they look at the incident. He can only say he is a great. Guy, Can he's I a father. That? He does great stuff charity in the community. Work. Does charity My work. agent, Scott Norton, I'm going to give you a little shot. I love you so much. Remember when I fucked up Matt Bradley mm-hmm. and I piss pumped some rookie and I didn't mean And I told people I talk about this because I Bradley was chirping me all game. Mm-hmm. And he used a, to be loud when he came he's in. fucking loud. Yeah, he was. I like him. But he was speaking to me. I'm does like, he follow you on Facebook too? Or? Probably. I follow everybody. Cam's That's so why into, I'm very popular. Cam's so into Facebook. I, well, I have not posted on shit. Facebook. I maybe once all year. I, I well, need to no get back into Facebook. You. No one cares about you. 
But I'll get you back. I, I got it. a lot of friends on Facebook. No, you don't. Know. Here's the deal. <laughs> Matt Brown has hurt me so bad. And I'm like, my fucking family's here. Like, my buddies. I'm like, I'm motherfucking you up, motherfucker. He said that to you. He, no, he's chirping me the whole game. He's fucking, you're fucking. I'm like, don't fuck with me, boy. I, I fi- I'll fight Erskine. But you ain't fight me, so don't fucking don't t- don't fucking talk shit. Why'd you tell him that? Oh, because he won't fight he's, you. He's talking shit, yeah. like, and I'm like, are you? Mu-? So I go, I'm gonna get you, motherfucker. I'm gonna get you. And so in the corner, I'm back checking, and he comes around the net, and I fucking kill him. And then some kid, Washington, where was he? At? He was in Washington. Yeah, okay. So I kill him, and then some kid fights me, and I piss pump him hard. Then I hurt him pretty good. Mm-hmm. After the game, I uh, Ch- Jason Chimera. Up in the press box, mm-hmm. tries to fight me in front of all the blues. After the game, after the fucking game, when I got booted out, I get I, he tries to fight me. I go, I'm like, I, I was actually kind of. He came up to he you. He came up in to me, the Jason. Press box, Jason, Jason, get his ass He's on. Now a coach, I think. Great, awesome player, number twenty. Played for them. Oh yeah, fast played for hit. Vancouver too. He right? tried to fight me, and I and I, I stood by my ground, and I'm like, I'll bag you up. Don't get me wrong, but I'm not going to do this here. And he's like, I'm going to go down and talk to him. So me and Jason went down, and I talked to Matt Bradley in the locker room. I apologized. Oh, yeah. he made you apologize? No, I wanted to do it. I wanted to do it. But what he, were you doing when Chimera was trying to fight you? He comes up to me. You fucking is. It was. Oh my god! Yeah, you fucking. Did you fuck. have anybody there? Go, what from the, the fuck devils? you say, boy? I go. What the fuck you say in the press box? In the press That's box. That's so Hoosier. It's such a Hoosier thing. It's so. Eureka, oh Missouri. Oh, my God. And you're Hoosier. not even cr- causing it. I'm not caught. Well, I did cause something. I well, just pumped a rookie, and I fucking knocked their guy out. I knocked two guys. They're both laying yeah, there. Yeah, but you're saying, he, you're saying that he was, like, asking He's like, you for motherfucker. It. And I'm like, okay. So I talked to him. We became kind of buddies. after You, you know, and Jason Jr. Yeah, yeah, of course. He's like, you will go down to apologize no. to Matt Bradley I go, right Let me go now. down there. I went, and Bradley's fucked up. Sweating. Like, oh, my God. Oh God. I felt so horrible. So then we have a hearing. Mm-hmm. And my, I'm in with Larry Plo. <laughs> And uh, and my agents on the conference call mm-hmm. in the locker room, and I remember talking to is it Bill Daly? Who was I talking to? Was it um, Colin Campbell, Campbell? Maybe it was Colin. And my agent goes on about me about how good of a human I am <laughs> for twenty five. Oh minutes. God, we're thinking I'm going to get a game or two. Twenty five minutes. He's talk blowing my fucking dick off. Talking Cam does really like okay, Scott. That's enough. I was like, "Stop it now! I'm Satan. What are you talking about?" And then all of a sudden, he's like, "Yeah, he's getting fucking five. Like, okay, <laughs> that was it. Like, that was, he pumped my tires up for 25 minutes. Couldn't mm-hmm. talk about the play. Talk my pump my tires. It's a human. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, we're thinking like a game or two, maybe not. Uh, fine, five games, mm-hmm. just like that. Like, nah, I don't believe you. Five games, boom, just like that. Wow. Yeah, five games. Five games. What'd you do to him? Look it up on YouTube. Yeah, look at that. Uh, it's hardcore, Andy. I, you think what I did seem to, to pop bad. up? You think well, oh, doesn't pop? When we show you right fucking now. Well, it doesn't seem say to Cam Jansen, Matt Bradley. Okay, I'll look it that pops up. up in two seconds. Okay, I'll look that up. I've seen. Put, Cam, I've put, seen put, what you put do. Put Andy Strickland on YouTube. See what pops up. <laughs> An interview or two <laughs> with me. None of, the, none of the good ones. <laughs> me and you, actually. Uh, I would have. I would have had fun interviewing you on just, TV, man. Would have been fun back in the day. I know, but unfortunately, other it people didn't, did. It didn't cross. Unfortunately, over. other people did, and I had to be like, oh, I, "Can you catch my drift when I'm, I'm chirping you back?" Yeah. Me and you would have gone toe to toe. It would have been so fucking funny. Would have been funny. Would have been so funny. Well, maybe though. Well, you could. You should have still been playing. I mean, well, maybe if I don't cuss so much, we can do this. Oh, true story. <laughs> maybe if I don't cuss. True so story. Much. So yeah. I'm at my. Uh, Which I won't. I'm this little it. eight year old kid comes up to me. And he wears, like, the Cam and Strick hat. Like, they bought it online, somewhere, whatever. He's eight? He's eight. Oh, Jesus Christ. He said to me, oh, no. straight face yesterday, I can't listen to the podcast. Why? I said, why? He goes, my dad says Cam cusses too much. Well, what the fuck? <laughs> it's a true story, man. Well, what the fuck? I got to send you to Andy, it to you. Andy, Andy, Andy. Yeah, this is a true I'm story. I'm not catering to eight-year-olds. Well, I can't, I'm I can't telling do you what I, they're, I, I, this is what they're saying. What do you want me to do? You. This is what do you they're want saying. this to be fucking Disney? <laughs> Do you? And he loves the hat. Do you want it to be Disney? He wears the hat. Do you think that's going to... Come on. So uh, that's just you what they're like saying. like everybody else? So I might have to have you send him a cameo. Oh, I 100% do it for free. Will you? Oh, God, yes. Send for me free. His, oh, my God, yes. Okay, okay. So we'll have Dude, to do 100%. that. We'll do that before we get out of here I today. I swear to God. Yeah, yeah his I'll, name is Blake. Oh, gee. Oh, okay. <laughs> and so he can't listen to the podcast because I'm of... I'm sorry. Uh, his dad says... I just get older and you can. Because of you. Well, fuck. Not me. No shit. Yeah. It's always because of me. 
God. Oh, poor All right, kid. Glenn Healy, All man. We appreciate right, him for joining us, man. As always, brought to you by Car Thanks, Show. 800-857-2481. 800-857-2481. Mention the promo code uh, CAM, and you're going to save 10%. That is so embarrassing. Hey, by the way, what? Um, uh, Panarin has a twisted knee. Yeah, I figured that. Have they said that publicly? I don't think they have. No, but it looked but like, that's what sources say that he's got a twisted yeah. knee, and that's uh, why he's been held out. Well, and then yourself. they went and did that to JD too, man. I mean, they, that that kind of. And they're like, this has nothing to do with the release. Oh, of course not. They Except for the fact that JD and the GM didn't know about the press release. Well, no, I know, but they were like basically distancing themselves. To the rest of the league from the press release, being like, was hey, that embarrassing? "Hey, hey, we had nothing to do with this. We didn't write this. We didn't approve it." I'm they wanted people you, to know. Stop. Yeah, I asked you on my radio show. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. I need a Canadian buys no. Yeah, was that motherfucking embarrassing? Oh, it was so embarrassing, so fucking embarrassing. It sounded pussy like ass, sick, a little baby pussy being upset. And to crawl out, you know, call pussy. out George Peros. He's smarter than all you motherfuckers times ten. The oh, fuck out! These people think he's so dumb. Hey, the they, league should be so calling smart. out the New York Rangers, man. Shit, make the playoffs. Go f- find somebody. Is there no kid from fucking Saskatchewan that's six four that could play? Huh? Well, how Is come there the, no farm? How boy? come the owner of the Rangers he wasn't complaining the last two years, man? When they jumped up in the lottery and they got the second uh, overall pick and then the first overall pick, they weren't sending out a press release then. Keep Brendan Lemieux. Where's ha- he at? Has some toughness. He'll fucking fight that dude. Yeah. The fuck out! I of don't here. mind if they want Pussies. toughness. Hey, listen. I don't even like if they want to go in a different direction from their GM and their president. Hey, that's their own business. But like to send out that release and not have the president of hockey like be involved in what they say and how it's Don't throw our players down. Okay. (laughs) Don't throw our players down. Okay. (laughs) The fuck out of here. Don't throw our players down. Don't throw our players down after the scrum, after Boost Nefskosh spears a fucking goalie. Don't do that. Let him spear the goalie, and then let him cross-check somebody in the face, okay? That's what we do. The fuck out of here. Find me ESPN. Babies. My first game next year, man. New TV deal. I hope you Rangers do. Rangers versus Caps. I need you to be fucking No, Rangers popular. versus Caps. That's what they should have on there. First game. 100%. But yet they're complaining that it's like bad for hockey. I love whatever. that brawl, too. It was cool, man. Hey, you know, and, and Char wasn't involved, and Dylan wasn't involved. Char wanted to be involved. <laughs> yeah, but he didn't. He could have gone and piss pump somebody, but he didn't do it, man. It's all respect. Brendan like the Smith fuck? was like, no, I got to fight Wilson. <clears throat> yeah, but he jumped him, but square off the motherfucker. Ooh. Square off him. Really? Yes, Andy. Yes. Why jump him? You get two, five, and ten, didn't he? Like, you get, you, you, don't jump him. He's going to go you. Go fucking get him. Like, let's go. Let's go. Square off like, let's go. Fucking take your bucket off. Take your fucking bucket off and go, let's go. And I'm going to catch you with one. But then you jump on me, fall. It's like, fuck, square off on the motherfucker. God right. damn. Cam is standing up right now. Well, like, it's just like, you know. He's in like a fighting but stance. Here's, I know, but here's the deal. <laughs> Poor Br- Brendan Smith, he, he, he stepped up in the locker room and said, I am got him. I got him. Okay. And you're a ballsy motherfucker, and I love you for I that. I think that was in the uh, press release, that Brendan Smith is going to have to fight him the next day. By the way. Well, well, Brendan Smith has to like the oblige owner. to that. Do you get the that, owner. Andy? And the owner fuck. can do whatever they want, but the, but the kid has to still do it, yeah. and he did. But just square off with the motherfucker. Two hundred and fifty G's for that fine, by the way. Fuck, it should be five hundred G's. It should have been a little higher. Fuck you, a little, you know, bit, little pussy bit ass statement. I thought that was a little weak by the league. I didn't like. I what think Wilson they went did. easy on him. And don't get me wrong, I thought Wilson's get two games. I thought I just gave him two games. I don't give a fuck. Right. I don't give a fuck. But you know what? You 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 have a your original six team, and you're soft as fuck, and you have all these like superstars on your team, mm-hmm. and then the bully gets you, who you play fifty times a year. You fucking pussies! Yeah, the fuck out of here. I sorry, agree. guys. I'm sorry. I I'm mentioned the problem. Blake's sorry, not dude. listening to this. Oh, poor right Blakey. I, I, I'm the way you're him. talking today. I'm sorry. Mention the promo code CAM. You're going to save uh, 10%. Carshield, carshield.com. All right, bellman.com. Cadillac, Buick, GMC on one side of the street. The other side, you got the uh, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram. All out there in Troy, Missouri. Stop on in. Business is good. Everybody's happy out there. They've got the uh, five-passenger Buick Envision. Buick. And you're looking at that Buick. one. At the Envision. I want that bad. Bye. What color are you looking I'll, at? I'll fucking pink. Okay. It don't matter. The legendary Jeep Grand Cherokee. I know you want that. <gasps> 
Ooh. Ooh, that Buick Encore, though, man. Oh, that looks pretty oh, sick. Oh, too. my eight, word. Eight passenger, seven passenger. Oh, my word. The GMC Acadia, those are cool. The Dodge Dur- uh, Durango. Durango, Andy. A lady just got eaten by a bear in Durango, Colorado, oh, by the Christ, way. Did I, I tell you about that? Uh, yes. She was walking her we dogs. We talked on a radio show. Oh, my God. I, you know, well, hey, hey, get a fucking gun. That hadn't happened there in a get long Get a gun. Time. Get a 40. What, I don't like a, guns. I know you don't. What are you going to do when you're walking I don't need a gun when I'm barbecuing outside, like worrying about this black bear that's walking around St. Louis right now. He's yeah. just having fun, did doing you, his thing right now. Did you see the tiger in Houston? Oh, my God. What was what? that guy doing with the gun, though? Because you're going to fucking kill the thing. Yeah, you? But, but he was a cop. Andy, he's trying to was save it his the tiger. No, it's a neighbor's tiger. He was like, no, sir. Get the. I'll kill this thing. I'll kill this oh, animal. Oh, so the neighbor had control over the tiger? So the, the tiger escaped. And the cop's like, there's kids around. There's kids down the street. Mm-hmm. And the fucking cop, who's a hero, has a gun to it and said, you better get your fucking tiger. I'm putting it down. Where's I'm, the guy? I don't know. I don't know. So what do he say? <whistles> Come here, Lucy. Hi, Lucy. <laughs> Come here. I mean, like, how do you get the tiger you, in? It's, hey, n- it's not like a little... Can I say uh, something? All co- you it's, fucks- it's not a German Shepherd you can just whistle for. If you got a motherfucking tiger... In your house, you better have fifty acres, you fucking moron. Fifty acres, more than that, you do. Just please, just don't live in. Just don't live Andy, near me. Andy, just don't a live million here. acres in for fuck's <laughs> sake, Jesus Christ! I'm hey. just saying, you're in goddamn Texas. It's cheap Is living. That where they were? Yes, they're in Houston. Go outside of Houston if you want a goddamn okay, tiger. So what was the end result? Acres. What was the end result of don't the know. video? Don't know. Did he shoot the tiger? No, no, because we would have heard about it. But you know what? If my kids are cr- fucking ties rollerblading around, there's a tiger, and and you're like, I'm going to get my credit card out there and see if he wants it. You'd be, fuck you. You want me with a gun, but get your fucking kid in the house now, or what's, I'll put this thing what's down. The t- Tony the tiger? Is Tony the that- tiger. <laughs> Tony. Hey, will you get Tony inside? Get, hello. Can you get Tony you guys inside? Mind? Listen, I sh- Listen, I would know how to shoot a gun there. Right, put that thing down. And, right and, away. And, and I hate hunters that kill rhinos and tigers no, but, and bears. No, but when I tigers... Running around like West Lake, Texas. It's fucking a son division. They're trying to get to the high school it's football wealthy, game on Friday. It's in you live in. And, but the acreage isn't there. If you have 50 acres, that's fucking I'm not having in. that. I'm not having it. And you're not having anything, no, not including having... fucking meat. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Get the tiger inside. Get the tiger inside. And you know what? Actually, no. Get the tiger outside in like fucking India. And then, well, yeah. Hey, you know the scariest place? I those. told you. Hey, remember, I told Glass you. Point. We talked about this on the radio show. The scariest place in the world as far as animals are concerned, India. is in India. Yeah, I know. Because they Not have t- the African safari. safari yes. Well, that could be there, too. Well, I, but I've I'm, heard about The that. most deaths is in India. This really? place in like India. Like wild tigers? I'm telling you. Wow. They have tigers and crocodiles, not alligators. 25-foot yeah. crocodiles. I can avoid the crocodiles. No, you can't. Are they in the water? They're in the water, and they're on the... They're on the Don't Andy, go in the water. Well, they go 20 yards, and they stop, okay? But the tigers, watch, go on YouTube, and look this shit up. The alligators go after these fishermen. And then they can't, the, the fucking fishermen, mm. but then the tigers come, boy. Really? And they swim across and uh, they jump up. Oh, yeah, I'm not dealing with that. You have two ultimate predators mm. all over you. Really? Yes. India. Check it out. Oh, look. Yeah. I, I know some people that are from there. Don't get me going on YouTube, home yeah. by. You know, I look up crazy Damn. shit. I love it. it. sounds a little crazy. Fucking love it. All right, daredevilhockey.com. Again, Camus Drick is the promo. You're going to say 25%. So, again, take advantage of that. Protect your kids. Skate lacerations are serious. Ask PK Subban, if you don't believe me. Man, his... Ask PK. I'm not going to say it. His what? Well, you now you have to say it. No, I... I, 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 I. <laughs> yeah, he got cut. Yeah, get, he did. He, he was a cut. pretty deep cut. But he wouldn't have gotten cut if he had there to have a hockey. That's so nerdy. Some, I just, he's just nerdy sometimes. He's nerdy. Help me eh? on this. Can you please? Because I, I like him. He's great for Do hockey. Do you? Is he? He's great for hockey. Is he? 100%. Still? I think what? he was. I think he was. Oh, he's making nine schmell. He ain't great for the fucking team he's playing for. No, I think he was. Like when he no, had like the snowboarder and no, all that. He just. It, 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 I don't know if he's that he's great. He's probably anymore. saying the same thing about. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm, listen, I like PK. I'm just trying to protect him from uh, skate lacerations. Get his ass on. Yeah, I know. And I don't like him. Skate lacerations. Get him on, I don't like him. PK. Get him on, I don't just like hear him. hear me out, man. Cam is straight. Hey, oh, say can, 25%. I say, can I say one more thing? Yeah. If you're going to interview Evander Kane on The Athletic, mm-hmm. can you at least ask him some fucking hard questions, What do you please? mean? Was he just interviewed? He's yeah. having a hell of a year, by the way. I don't he give He put up some points. I don't give up. like 22 a, or 23. He's got 22 points for his own uh, goals. Are you one of those that call goals points? Shut up. 
You ever heard the hear that guy like on the radio? No, he's got twenty two goals. Oh, she had two points last night. Four, forty six. Two 46. goals. I don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. Here's the deal. Do you remember Coach Oshi, by the way? Yeah, his daddy. I, I don't know. We love Coach. We love. We okay. give a big shout out to TJ. If you're gonna interview a Vander Kane, and we went him on the pod, and mm-hmm. he's refusing it. Well, and you don't ask him about what the fuck he spent his money on. Go fuck yourself. What do you mean? She didn't ask him about that. They didn't ask him anything. They're like, so how do you feel now about? He's like, well, I don't feel that good. It's like, what? What'd you do? What houses are you paying for with your cousins? Mm-hmm. What the fuck you spend? Why are you fucking Photoshop? You, you got a photo of you with a fucking brick of fucking money and you're fucking yeah. in vain. Why don't you ask questions mm-hmm. to him? You softballed it, you pussy. I read that whole thing. I'm like, I didn't learn a fucking thing. He felt sorry for himself the whole oh, fucking really? time. I'm like, dig at so, him. So you're saying the story was The story was a okay. joke. I'm not going to call a guy out. No, you just did. I didn't even say his name. Oh, okay. But it's like, you why say, do you have a gambling problem? What are you gambling on? Are answer? you a drug addict? Did they How ask many? Him that? Do you, did you have your girlfriends get pregnant? Did you paste? There's a b- bunch of shit. You don't ask him anything. Mm. Anything. All right. Um, Softball bullshit. Yeah. No wonder he's not coming on. Daredevilhockey.com. I mean, listen, just hook it up. And then get your ceiling fan from uh, the ultimate hockey yep. fans.com. Cam and Strick Pod slash ultimate hockey fans.com. Pick the team that you want. You can do regular hockey stick blades. You got little pucks on there. Yeah. You got a goalie so mask. So cute. Goalie stick blades. It's really cool, man. So check that out. And uh, Brody's got to put something up there. He will, actually, on Instagram, yep. reminding people what the, fan, what the yep. fan looks like. Yep. yep. Okay. Yep. And, yep. Uh, yep. and all yep. that other stuff. So anyway, this was Glenn Haley, man. And we appreciate him joining us. Love and him. Good conversation. We've got some great ones on the way, oh, God. too. Big boys coming. And plus... The uh, big dicks are coming. The big dicks are coming. Our, our playoff preview is on the way. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> I, I sorry to be so like... I, I get fired up at times. I, I just... When, <laughs> we're, I'm such a... When people don't want to come on our pod, yeah. and then they do a pussy motherfucking yeah. interview, like yeah. a fucking pussy. No, you don't like that. And I'm like, God damn you. Yeah. You don't even ask him. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Sorry, guys. I mean, I'm fired up. Sorry, boys. Okay. And girls. All right. Love you all. You know that. Until next time. I'm not perfect. Keep it real on the Cameron's Drink Podcast.